Hi folks, my name is Dan Tucker. I'd like to welcome all of you to the weekly meeting of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. Um, our first, first of all, we have several policies here. There are no personal attacks, and in addition, one pool at a time. Second, um, three dollar tuition charge will be collected from each of you so the college may display its expenses. Next, this restaurant, um, in order to survive, the restaurant needs to make some money off of us, not in business for itself. And so, uh, a food or drink purchase will be required for you, so you might as well get yourself some dinner or something else to eat or drink. Uh, our format is as follows. First, we're going to have Charlie, will, our coordinator, will announce the upcoming programs. We will then have announcements, neighborhood or community interest, no speeches, folks, those must be announcements. And I'll introduce the speaker. We'll talk for about an hour or so on tonight's topic. And after that, questions and answers. Again, those speeches at that juncture, uh, this like Jeopardy, all questions must be in that form. Finally, after that, that's when we have the speeches. We have rebuttals. Tim, our moderator, will portion out the time for a person, and you can talk for a few for five minutes or so, whatever time, whatever time gives you. We prefer that you report the speaker, but you can talk about anything that you want during the, during the rebuttal period. And then the speaker will get the last word, and then we're going to close things down at about four to eight. The time to so the minutes. restaurant closes at eight o'clock. All right, Charlie, start the announcements. All right, Charlie, uh, hang on. Let me get the uh, screen. You know, uh, ahead, Charlie, that microphone would work a lot better if you didn't keep your hand over it. Start the announcements. You can hardly hear that. Feet. That defeats the whole purpose. I know, I could just hand over the microphone. Ahead, All right, welcome to meeting number 3000. Charlie. Ready or what? We'll be in a, yeah, I'm trying to get the damn screen up. It's, uh, it's the web browser's a little bit lagging right now, but it's coming. As soon as, oh. I, as, soon as it comes up here, I'm going to share a screen. Oh, I can announce while you're, you're waiting. Welcome right, to meeting Derek. number 3,708 of the College Complexes, the playground for people who think. First of all, we have a Google email group as well as a meetup group. It's easy to subscribe, it only takes a minute or so, and you'll get one or two updates during uh, the week as to our upcoming programs. Uh, okay, that's out of the way. Please, for everyone uh, attending by Zoom to mute, please mute, at least during the presentation. Put a big red X over the microphone. Please do it now, thank you. Also, will those in attendance at the restaurant, please keep quiet during the presentation because our microphones to pick up these conversations. So during the presentation, please contain uh, discussing uh, issues at that time. Now, although I am not a capitalist, I am not a capitalist. However, I will give an advertisement for our upcoming programs. On March the 25th, we will be having an open microphone on the mayoral election um, for mayor of Chicago. Uh, seems to be a bit of a contest here. Uh, the candidates to the left uh, is, is uh, perhaps not doing quite as well, at least in the polls. So there's some issues here we're pending. So it should be an exciting evening. Everyone will be afforded five or 10 minutes to, to indicate uh, who they recommend that uh, you should vote for. I haven't decided, so this is your chance to let me convince me uh, uh, whom I should vote for. The Republican candidate, Charlie, or the Libertarian? They don't have any 
any uh, political affiliations that, to, during these elections. Um, uh, okay, transitioning into April, we begin our special Earth Month series of speakers. Special Earth Month series of speakers. On April the 1st, we will hear from Nuke Watch. Nuke Watch. Uh, they've been, they keep their eye on nuclear reactors and nuclear missiles. So anything nuclear, uh, they'll be prepared to tell us about their activities uh, in that regard. On April the 8th, an organization that I am affiliated with, the, uh, we have three presenters for Illinois passage of the Earth Bill. And then we're again, we're gonna be opening it up for you to tell us why you think we should stop climate change. So get working on your presentation uh, for April the 8th. On April the 15th, uh, our own college regular, Dan Weinberg, who's on tonight, will be talking about capitalism and soil. There's an enormous amount of research and on regenerative agriculture and how we focus on uh, soil as the crucial issue. So um, a lot of issues regarding food production. Uh, April 15th, um, we're gonna be uh, soil. <laughs> on April 22nd, um, your own Charles Paydock. I'm going to be presenting my eco plan to reconfigure the use of a car in Chicago and the country. This is well researched. I have a plan that will solve your transportation problems. So it's been well thought out. Uh, I'm introducing it in this forum on April the 22nd, all about autos. On April the 29th, uh, we are presently open. However, I am in conversation and we may welcome a gentleman, a former college regular, many of you are familiar with, William Porter, J.J. Mm -hmm. Jameson, who was released from prison uh out east and we're in touch and making arrangements for him to, to speak yeah. again at the college on april the 29th don't talk okay okay let me let me tell you please be quiet let, let, let's hang up hang up okay uh that brings us into may we have four dates open in May. We usually have a May Day speaker on revolution or on uh, socialism or labor. Uh, it's not posted yet. Four dates open in May. Also, one other thing, we have two archival sites. Uh, you can, we have a recording of previous programs as well as a, another list of PowerPoint presentations. So you're welcome to check out either one of those sites. Okay, that's it. Tim, take it away. All right, uh, go ahead, David. We're gonna get you started here. All right. All right, any other announcements of neighborhood or community interest? All right, hearing none, we have tonight from Enrique Perez with us. He's going to talk about presence in the media and we speak. speak through the media. Give it up, please, for Enrique Perez. Okay, Enrique, just push everything against the wall, Enrique, and grab the microphone. Come on, grab the mic and take it away from you. Grab the mic. Just, 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 yeah, just like that. Make sure you hold it. Can you? Can yeah. You? Yes. Okay. Testing. Okay. Okay. You don't have to have it that loud, but let me. Okay. Let me get your. Go ahead and get introduce yourself. I'll get your PowerPoint up and we'll test the clicker. Good night, um, hello everybody. My name is Enrique Perez and I'm gonna be giving a presentation approximately an hour long on free speech and media bias. 
just as soon as he has my PowerPoint up and ready to go. Okay. Give me a second, please. Yeah. Okay, it's the beginning. Let's see now if we can see everything. Okay, not here. Got to make sure the clicker works. It's not clicking. Hang on a minute. Right. Yeah, I know, I know. It's. Well, turn it on. I think it has to be turned on. Oh, okay. All right, let's take a look here now. It should be working now. Yeah, it's starting now. Yeah. All right, let me make sure we get it working here. Oh, okay. Okay, we got it going now, and uh, let's get you on the thing. Okay, hang on here. Let me make sure we get our. Uh, okay, hang on. Bear with me for a minute. Okay, go ahead and get started. We're we're good. Okay, good to go. Yeah, we're good to go now. Is this a good volume? I I think yeah I think so. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, just, just go ahead. Then. Okay, America. America is the greatest country ever in the history of the human race. I believe that with all my heart and all my soul. Throughout most of humankind, most countries, kingdoms, empires were based on conquest and subjugation. The divine right of kings, ironclad rule of the strong over the weak, or simply whoever had the most swords. America was based on an idea. And that idea was that a person had an inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What a novel idea, right? Previous to America's foundings, governments existed to strengthen and solidify the ruler's hold over their own people. Our founding fathers created a country that existed by the consent of the governed. The consent of the governed. Think about those words for a bit. Just think about what that actually means, the consent of the government. What king, emperor, pharaoh, khan, conqueror, or other historical figure would have given a rat's posterior hemisphere to even think about the notion of the consent of the government, i.e. the rule, like they really care. The founding fathers went a step further. They embodied the notion of the consent of the government in a series of documents. The Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and this isn't working. I'm going to have to, okay, just, just, okay. I'll get it. Uh, we, no, it's just going to take, I think so. Just, just give it a sec, try it again. Bear, bear with me for a minute. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Hang on. So we're working great. I know, I know. We're, we're getting there. Perfect, perfect timing. Just give me a second, please. We've got two more people let in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hang on here now. All right, good. Let's let's try it again. Go ahead. Okay. Point, enough. It, point it to the computer. Okay, I'll point it again. I got it. All right now. Just pointed at the computer. I think that yeah, might be where no, the I'm trouble gonna, is. I had some stuff I didn't know was okay. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Okay. The founding fathers went a step further. They embodied the notion of the consent of the governed in a series of documents. One of these documents was the Bill of Rights, a document that for the first time in history, for the first time, limited what a government could do, i.e., the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments of the Constitution. Government, thou shalt not do this, and thou shalt not do that. What a novel idea. Quick pacing. And one of these limitations on governmental overreach was the First Amendment. The First Amendment basically said that you as a citizen, not a subject, but a citizen, had the right to express your opinion without fear of persecution. Again, what a novel idea. Our right to free speech is under assault. And it is under assault, not from outside powers like China or Russia, although they're trying to do their own thing to us, but from within, from within. Free speech is under attack. The mainstream media is hopelessly biased against conservatives. The left used to believe in free speech, but they no longer do. If you say the wrong thing or express the wrong thought, the left attacks you. 
The left is hell bent on squelching free speech, or at least speech that they don't agree with, that they don't agree with. And sadly, this is the essence of my presentation tonight. The mainstream media is complicit in this effort. I am to fight back against the left attempt to turn our country into a woke dystopia. We as conservatives must unite and fight back. The future of our country is at stake. They can see it in the in the okay. Point at the computer. Point at the computer. At the computer. At the computer. Uh, hang on a second again. Probably the same thing. Yeah, well, it, uh, damn it. Hang on a minute here. Okay, hey, it's gonna, shoot. Give me a second, it's gonna, try it again. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay. The left hates free speech. Here's an interesting one. I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death, your right to say it. That is a that is a maxim that the left used to believe in, that liberals used to believe in that. The essence of free speech, that you will defend speech you disagree with. No more. Oh, no, no. Uh, close it again. No. Hang on here. I think try it again, bridge. try it again. Okay. Question over who said this. Some say this saying came from Voltaire, others say it came from Madeleine and Peter Salt, uh, a, an English uh, author and famous personality, but it really doesn't matter because it's the sentiment that it expresses that's what's important. For those of us who are over 40, over 50 in the room, there was a time when people trusted the media. And I kind of remember that time, sort of. I'm sure some of you will remember who this guy is. Uh, David Brinkley, ABC, NBC, back from the old days. When he spoke, people believed him. Maybe he had his views, maybe he was left, maybe he was right. It didn't really matter because when he got on, on the air, people believed him because he was he was reporting the news. Edward R. Murrow, another famous one from way back when. I think he was the liberal, I don't really know because he was never criticized for being partisan or being biased one way or the other. He reported the news. This man is the gold standard for journalists. Walter Cronkite of CBS. Who remember, it, it, for those that might remember, back when President Kennedy was assassinated and he happened to be away from his studio, he somehow managed to get into a, a radio station to broadcast the, the sad and bad news that Kennedy had just died, but it was recorded through some type of, of camera, and I've actually seen YouTube videos on it. This guy was some somber, he was humble, but he was, he was telling the truth and he was reporting to the nation, a nation that was on the verge of a great, great grief, starting to grieve. But he did one other thing is, is if you listen, if you look it up on YouTube and see his video of him reporting the death of President Kennedy, he, it sounded to me like he was actually, in a way, uniting the country. That everybody that in the United States of America that heard his voice, didn't matter if you were Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal, they believed what he said and they were united by the grief that he was conveying of what had just happened. I challenge anyone in this room or anyone on Zoom or anyone to find me one journalist, one newscaster, one media personality who could unite the country just by the way they broadcast. You can't because it doesn't exist. He came from a time that no longer exists. It is gone and it may never come back. This is what we have today. This is what we have today. Honey, do you want to watch left-wing news or right-wing news? Do you want to watch MSNBC or Fox? Well, I remember when it was just news. Like I said, that time is gone, sadly, forever. The right, the right wing media is mainly Fox News and a number of other smaller outlets. But, and this is where, this is where the essence of my presentation is. The mainstream media, however, has gone hopelessly to the left. And I'm gonna go through examples and studies and proof that show that. Without a doubt, and in some cases to the extreme radical left, depending on who you're watching. 
This is kind of how I feel when I watch the various media outlets. Maybe take Twitter out of there because after Elon Musk did his magic, at least that's starting to be a little more uh, you know, straight shooter. Examples of media bias against conservatives. And I just want you, I, I, I phrased it in this way for a very specific reason that will be apparent later in the presentation. Those four words, media bias against conservatives. For now, it's just a title, but it's going to be more later on, and I'll show you that. Remember Dan Rather's expose on George W. Bush, the, the forged documents on his uh, National Guard service and how it was all there right before an election to take George Bush down? Do you remember that? Yes. Well, he, he, it was finally disclosed, and then finally he, he got his what he, what he deserved. Does anybody remember President Reagan's first debate with Walter Mondale in, in 1994 yes. when he had what, what might be called a senior moment or where he seemed off or he just maybe wasn't himself that day, raising questions about his age? The media was asking, are you, are you fit enough to be president? Well, as you recall, in the second debate, he gave Walter Mondale that tasting about youth and inexperience <laughs> that put Mondale in his place and ended up Mondale only winning one state out of 50 in the re-election. Okay, here's, here's the next example. I think we know who this guy is. This was, a, this was something that happened not too long ago. It was a big White House affair where uh, former President Obama was there, a bunch of dignitaries were there. And if you watch the entire video of it, after everyone's speaking and it just come, kind of becomes a free for all, sort of like, you know, gather after the fact and just everybody hangs out. Joe Biden was, was wandering kind of aimlessly around the, the room there, sort of like nobody was paying attention to him and it looked like he didn't know what he was doing. Sad to see, but just watch the full unedited version of what he was actually doing that day. Okay, here's another example of Joe Biden, kind of reaching into space. To, to who's, he, who's he trying to shake a hand with? Did he think somebody was there? Did he imagine somebody being there? But yes, this is also a very recent example. And unfortunately, he could have broken his hip here, but three times when he fell trying to climb onto Air Force One. Why isn't the media paying more attention to this? Because it raises obvious health questions to anybody who has common sense. Okay, here's another example of President Trump when he gave a speech at West Point uh, when he was still president. It was a cold day or whatever, and he's walking down this ramp and he's walking very carefully. And if we recall, the media made a big deal about this because it looked like he was tippy-toeing or, or trying not to fall. And they're asking him, can you walk? And all, all kinds of things went on as a result of that. And the New York Times and the Washington Post even did an article on President Trump walking down the ramp. But keep in mind, he was wearing slicks, uh, leather shoes, and he was walking on a metal icy ramp. So, And it was a cold day. So yes, it was a dangerous thing that he was doing. Trump never fell. Biden fell three times. So but you tell me who's the one who needs to be questioned about being fit for office. Yeah, but where is the New yeah. York Times and Washington Post expose on Biden's fitness? Where is the expose? I, I I it it's not. It's not coming. Uh, Joe Biden slurs his words, speaks in incoherent Better. sentences, tries to shake his hand through the air, seems lost half the time, and is clearly being led by his handlers. If President Reagan and President Trump were put under the media microscope for their alleged foul faux pas, why isn't the same media doing the same with Biden? That's a serious question. Why is the media not examining Biden's health to the extent that he did with President Reagan and President Trump? Media bias against conservatives, anyway. Hunter Biden. This will be quick. Back in October 14th of 2020, the New York Post published this article that talked about the laptop and the secret emails and everything right before the election. Almost immediately, the mainstream media squelched the story. Twitter banned the New York Post. The mainstream media wouldn't cover it because it was all whatever, Russian disinformation or a hoax or, or Trump's attempt to stay into power. And so this story was totally ignored by the mainstream media. Well, here we go, March 16, 2022, about a little over a year ago in a couple of days, the New York Times, the New York Times, which is supposed to be the gold standard for media and extremely liberal, publishes this article. It's it's a, it's, it's an article about Hunter Biden's tax bill and investment. Okay, I just been told I'm talking too long. Okay, no problem. 
Hunter Biden. It, 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 it's it's the tax bill article. It's like it's not the big hey uh, you know the, the laptop was true or whatever. But if you read that article down further down, the the New York Times basically admits that the information they got was from the authenticated cache of emails that came from the, the laptop. In other words. Without saying so, the New York Times finally admitted that the Hunter Biden story was true, right? Because they had to, because the evidence was so overwhelming. And shortly thereafter, showed it to the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, and now it's common knowledge. January 6th, we've all seen pictures of this. We've all seen pictures of this, and that's fine. It, it happened, it's it, right there. And the media covered it to the nth degree. And there was even a committee, the January 6th committee. Let's talk about the other insurrection. Well, let's talk about what the definition of an insurrection is. If it's breaking into a governmental building and attempting to quote unquote overthrow the government or to stop the wheels of power, if that's the definition of an insurrection. Well, let's talk about the other insurrection. Saturday, May 30th, 2020, during the riots and the summer of love and all that great stuff. Okay, here's the White House under assault with the, the, the Secret Service and the police trying to keep rioters and looters from breaking into the White House. Let's stick with the similarities. You have a group of angry people trying to break in. In the case of the Capitol on January 6th, they did break in. In the case of the White House, they didn't, but they tried. And they, if, if, if the uh, Capitol building is the people's house because it's a seat of one branch of government, well, then I have to say that the White House is also the people's house, which because it's the seat or the head of the other branch of government. And I would add the Supreme Court into that case as well. So here you have a mob of angry rioters trying to break into the White House, trying to, but they didn't. Now, why didn't they? Was it because at the end they said, oh, we're just here to peacefully protest and we don't want to break into the White House? I have another theory. The Secret Service, which is charged with protecting the White House, did a much, much better job than the Capitol Police did. And basically, kept oh, oh. They, had to, they had to evacuate President Trump. But of course, the media doesn't care about that. So they didn't care about the occupant of the White House. But this was never referred to in that way. There was no congressional investigation. It was just one of a, thousands of other more riots. Jesse Smollett. I'm just going to say about Jesse Smollett, this is quick. He did something. The media was all like, oh, it's a, it's a MAGA Republican who beat him up. And when, it, when, when the Chicago police, of all people, found out that he was lying and charged him and stuff, the media went silent on this story. It was like when the narrative fit their, their preconceived biases, they were like all over it, like he's telling the truth. And, and these white, red hat wearing guys beat him up. Well, it, it, we know where that went. Just another example of media bias. COVID. COVID. COVID gave the entire left so much ammunition to basically show their true bias. Here we go. Situation one, right here. You have a church gathering. The mainstream media has a fit. It's like, how could they all get together? They're a bunch of Christians and they're spreading COVID. But in the second picture happening around this in the same time period, when the lockdowns were in place, the mainstream media ignores, look at that large set. In fact, that crowd looks larger than this crowd. So why isn't there a concern that COVID is being spread when the rioting and the looting is happening, but when a bunch of Christians get together to pray and sing church hymnals, it's the end of the world. Mainstream media bias. Georgia, South Dakota. A bunch of white guys on motorcycles wearing red hats getting together for their annual festival. Uh, which is riding bikes through town and then just having a party. The media goes apoplectic over this, but the riots and the looting are going on. Where is the outrage there? Nancy Pelosi gets to go to her fancy hairdresser during COVID when she's supposed to be staying at home and locking down because we're all going to die from this disease. Okay, it went bad again. Uh, all right, the point is over. Trying to get in. One full at a time, guys. Oh. So, hello. Tell me what. Uh, uh, just somebody was trying to get in. Just give me a second, please. Oh. Uh, 
Go ahead. Sorry about that. Still not working. Back to your PowerPoint. Hang on a minute. Uh, Try it again. Okay, there we go. We're back in business. Gavin Newsom, French Laundry Restaurant. All those people are supposed to be home isolating because of the dangerous virus going around. Yet they're out there hanging out, no masks, together, right in the heart of the COVID pandemic or whatever the heck it was. Governor Pritzker defends family travels to Wisconsin during stay-at-home orders. He didn't do a very good job at it because it just shows a, no. the crass hypocrisy of Governor Pritzker. And of course, the no, local I media don't. reported uh, it, but the national media should have been just out. let it go. Just let it go. Just like it was calling out everything else. Attorney, you'll be able to get in. It's your head off that it goes to you. Okay. All right. Just a minute. Sorry about that. Try. Give it a second. Let me get back to the. Yeah, what time do we have? Well, yeah, this is Tim. Tim, we'll try it again. You can't, you can't be having a conversation <laughs> with everyone during the press. Harley, we are we're trying to okay. do something. Sorry, you got to contain. Okay. We're picking up your conversations. You're Charlie, you. shut up and let them present. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, so, Bill. Uh, I'm so, trying to tell you, we I are know, picking up your. Can, don't get hostile with me. That's not called for. One foot at a time, guys. Okay. Now we want to get to go. We're good to go. Okay. So, so Governor Pritzker shuts down the state of Illinois, and yet he is out there taking vacations to Wisconsin and to Florida when we're all supposed to be staying at home because a mean evil virus is going to kill us all. Well, then why does he get to do it? And why isn't the national mainstream media, or why didn't they call him out on it? Okay. This is an interesting one. Sunday, March 15, 2020. That was per Pritzker's orders, the last day that bars and restaurants could operate in the entirety of the state of Illinois. At, at midnight at that time, going into the 16th, the lockdown began. Everyone go home, nothing's gonna be open on Monday. Or does it mean that everything is not gonna be open? Well, let's find out. Two days later, Tuesday, March 17, 2020, Pritzker reopens Illinois for the primary election. And I actually voted on that day in person. And yes, it was crowded. It, I guess it was a major spreader event, but I didn't get COVID, but it was a major spreader event. Two days after we were all supposed to be home, not doing anything, but twiddling our thumbs and learning how to use Zoom. But Illinois, okay, but this is what happened on, on, on March 17, 2020. Illinois did give Joe Biden enough delegates to essentially secure the Democratic nomination. Because you remember, he was kind of, for a while there, he was a little behind, or he was, and then he won like South Carolina. Then when he won Illinois, that kind of basically put him over the top. So I guess Governor, I, I, maybe I'm being a conspiracy theorist, that Governor Pritzker reopened Illinois just to get Joe Biden in the door, and then we closed it down promptly. But we'll never know. Wednesday, March 18th, the next the next day after the election, Illinois goes back into extended lockdowns with all the problems it caused. Think of your mental health of all your kids that suffered. Think of all the drug prescriptions for mental health that had to be filled. Just think of all of that and all of the lost year of learning that happened because of that. The summer of love. Okay. This one, this one takes the cake. And if you could just move the camera just a little down because there's a, I have a capture at the top. Okay. Okay, talk about mainstream media bias. You gotta love this guy. He's a nice guy, but he's totally wrong. That's Ellie Bell. She's in Minneapolis. There's a building behind him burning. I don't know if that guy in the mask is a disciple or just of his, or he just wants media attention. But this during this this uh, video, uh, he's out there. If you look at the video, actually, he's reporting. Oh, this is just a lot of people, and then he says it's not generally speaking a movie. Nothing unruly going on here. There's a building burning behind them. Half the city's on fire, and he's out there telling everybody it's okay. Nothing unruly. It's just they're, they're just protesting. But no, I think it's more than unruly. Okay. The less favorite pastime is to accuse conservatives of misinformation. Okay. Well, let's look at that a little more. According to the dictionary, this misinformation means incorrect or misleading information. According to Valchi, 
it's not generally speaking unruly. Well, anyone with common sense can see it. So that case is a clear cut case that he's wrong. So uh, and unruly means basically uh, it disorderly, it's kind of walking, but it means disorderly or, or not being able to be ruled or organized or whatever. So basically, Ali Galchi is either lying or he's so out of it that he just can't even see what's going on. <laughs> Which raises my next question. It's the conservatives that are accused of misinformation, but is it really the Democrats that are spreading misinformation? That's a prime example, but that's something that's so obvious that it's easy to see. What about in all their other new, uh, nuances of news reporting where you can't get into all the details? 30 minutes. Social distancing is dead. Three weeks ago, this, this, I made this a while ago, violent writers and looters destroyed whatever coronavirus social distancing still existed in America. Yes, there you have me old Donald Trump giving a rally, but there you have the rioters and the looters burning yet more of America. And from the looks of it, all of them are equally distant together. So if, if virus is being spread, they're all spreading it. But why is the mainstream media only calling out uh, what, what happens on the right? Philadelphia, okay, here's another one. Uh, and I, I kind of want them to see that if, if they can, but uh, if they can do it just a little bit. Philadelphia is on fire, rioting, looting are happening out. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say what it says. It says, why does rioting and looting only occur in Democrat controlled cities? I say again, why does rioting and looting only occur in the cities controlled by Democrats? I challenge anyone in this room and present it at the rebuttal if you want, and, and I'll, I'll retract this slide here, that you find me a city, a major city or a mid-sized city in America during the summer of love, the summer of 2020, that, that happened that was that had a Republican mayor and a majority Republican city there council. No Republican that, mayor. That, that, good point. That you, you find me a city that run by Republicans that was looting and rioting and on fire. I don't think there is any. I don't think you'll find it. And we're, we're dead again. Okay, hang on. Just. Uh... Boy, we try it again. Okay. okay, we're back. Thank you. At the computer, it'll be a lot. Okay. Through. Now we get to now we're getting into some specifics here. This lady's a piece of work. Savannah Guthrie, currently with NBC. Okay. Here's a clip of one of the interviews she did with Biden in advance of the 2020 election. Guthrie interviews Biden. It's like, look at the expression on your face. And if you see the, the actual video of the interview, it's very soft spoken, it's dreamy. It's like, oh, he's my hero. He's a great president. He can do no wrong. She's like waiting on his every syllable from his incoherent mouth to see what she's going to ask him next, which is going to be another softball question. It's like, yes, he's such a great president or will make such a great president. Okay. Oh, my God, the demons have come from hell. Guthrie interviews Trump. That was that famous interview where they, uh, in the one with Biden, they were close together, they were talking, they were very good, uh, nice with each other here. They're like sitting 10 or 15 feet apart. And, and she's basically going all at him. Mainstream media bias or just a coincidence? You tell me. Chicago is on fire. Yes, this was extensively covered by the Tribune and the Sun-Times, but we saw the picture. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, the media will show you what they want to show you. They think something fits their narrative or they're, they're biased. They're going to blast that picture across the entire country like all the conservatives getting together for their rallies or like the, the storming of the Capitol. But they're not going to put this on MSNBC or, or CNN and say this is happening by the Antifa Black Lives Matter crowd. They're not going to do that because it doesn't fit their narrative. This guy, a clown, and by the way, a, an actual clown once actually did run for mayor of Chicago, thanks to the clown ages ago, which I'm sure maybe some in this room will remember. But this guy dresses a clown. He must think it's funny what he's doing. It was the one that set that car on fire. He, he did get arrested and whatever, but it's kind of like he's trying to make light of a very serious situation. Okay, this is another situation during all the riots going on and, and, and well, the unruly behavior, as Ali Belshi was, would say. You have these uh, Chicago cops. It looks like there's at least 50 of them there. Though. They're surrounding an area where the, where the rioters were trying to get, which was basically the statue of Christopher Columbus that they were trying to topple. For some reason, they hate the left hates Christopher Columbus, but that's a topic for another day. But you can see, you can see how the police, uh, right now, this is kind of the beginning 
of, of, the, of the unrest in this portion of it, but there it's starting, it's going to get worse. Antifa camouflage. Okay. If you look at police video that I've seen, it's been that was put out there at the time with like drones and everything. What you see at first is you do see peaceful protesters just marching with their signs nice and quiet, approaching. Uh, well, this is the Christopher Columbus statue. And so, yeah, so it, it starts off peaceful, but then you see video of, of people in the back just suddenly kind of coming out of the crowd. They're dressed in black, they're carrying like coolers or stuff, and they start producing everything from sharpened objects to frozen water bottles and make wood projectiles, even improvised explosive devices. And I'm telling you what, those, ex those lights, explosions you see there, those are not the police. Those are the, the Antifa rioters and looters throwing stuff at the police, and they're basically surrounded. Okay, the left will never, ever, ever show this picture for good reason because this definitely goes against their narrative 1,000%. A wounded Chicago police officer, almost like a wounded soldier in a, in a war, being carried off because of the rioters and, and, and the looters and people just throwing stuff at them. So the left will never show this picture. I've never seen this on MSNBC. I've never seen this on CNN, and it won't be there. Okay. This is another one. I've seen, I don't even know how to, uh, every, every school kid in America should see this picture because the things that have, they have seen that are force fed to them or that are channeled to them by a very biased media, this needs to be a counter narrative to a lot of what's out there. Obviously, obviously we, there's gotta be some hate in this. I don't see a whole lot of love in this. Uh, a black police officer being uh, confronted in, in such a, nasty way by a writer, but th this picture speaks volumes. I, I could spend a, a long time just talking about this picture, but it, it is disturbing to see. Black lives matter or do they? Black lives matter unless they are police, unborn, murdered by other blacks, and other, another category down there that's hard to see. Just of uh, blacks killed and riots across American cities. Yes, we all know that it was the George Floyd murder that caused all this to, to precipitate. But what about the other blacks that were killed by rioters and looters that were caught up in the crossfire of all the violence going on? It wasn't just stores that were burned. It wasn't just property that was damaged. Uh, and it wasn't just the rich people that were hurt. Uh, common everyday black uh, people were, were killed as well. Okay. Okay. There is a professor, his name is Jim Grossclose. He's a UCLA professor of science and economics. He wrote a book called Left Turn. It goes in, it's a great book. I would suggest you buy it if, you, if you're so inclined. He, an entire book devoted to documenting and study liberal media bias. And, and these are just some of the conclusions without having to read the whole book. Nearly all mainstream media outlets have a liberal bias. He proved this through surveys and, and other methods. Many conservative outlets are less tilted towards the right than typical mainstream media outlets are tilted towards the left. And I know a lot on the left won't believe that because they'll say Fox News, Fox News, blah, blah, blah. Well, I say MSNBC, MSNBC. Have you ever heard some of the people on MSNBC are, are saying? Well, you probably have and maybe some people believe it. The bias has shifted to the average American's political or basically the political leaning significantly to the left, and yes, it has into the election, and that the way they vote, and I, I wish I could do that because there's an interesting statistic there that they basically vote, let, uh, the, the journalists basically vote Democrats in any given election, uh, you, the, the, the typical, the typical per, person, uh, the average person votes 50-50 or maybe 45, 30, 55 or something, but not 90-10. Liberal media bias goes back a long time, and I think I've already documented some cases on that. The 2004 survey by New York Times columnist basically asked who would they vote for, and the results were 92% for Kerry, 8% for Bush. Then another survey in 1981 asked 240 journalists at various publications, New York Times, Washington Post, and, and even, even PBS and, and the three networks, how many of them voted Republican in the presidential election of 64? 6%, 68, 14%, 72, 19%, 76, 19%. General, 
generally speaking, surveys that exclude local reporters and local situations show that journalists vote Democrat at least 85% of the time. But no bias to see there. Mainstream journalists are not, I repeat, are not representative of the American population. They're in their own bubble. Even in a blowout Democrat year, such as 96, when Clinton beat Dole by a 5% in the popular vote, which is considered practically a landslide, the disconnect between the American public and the mainstream media is obvious. The margins by which they vote at different areas ways it, it's just it's just dramatic it's it's like the mainstream media does not represent the, the american public the media has often been referred to as the fourth branch of government but imagine if congress were as rep, unrepresentative of the american people as the media is if 93 percent of the congress were democrat and i know the democrats would like that or if democrats kept winning the presidency 93 percent of the time could we have a stable country could we have a stable society i think we know the answer to that question Nadine Strassen, someone else who's done a deep dive into this. First of all, Nadine, Nadine Strassen is a liberal feminist, an ACLU activist, and she was the first woman to lead the ACLU from 91 to 2008. So her liberal bona fides are there. Who really benefits from the, from the First Amendment? This is an article that she wrote. Liberals like me have long assumed that the political and classical liberalism go hand in hand. And for those of us on the political left, support for free speech, even for thought that we hate is a defining value. So here you have a liberal feminist telling us that free speech is a defining value. Recently, this tenet of this is this is, next two pages are her analysis. Recently, the tenet of free speech has come uh, under fire from the left. This includes student activists, academics, journalists, cultural leaders, and democratic politicians. Why has the political and cultural left turned against the First Amendment? She asked. Starting in, 19, in the 80s, many, many liberals sought to restrict several types of controversial language in the popular media. Furthermore, since the 80s, liberals have adapted, advocated campus hate speech codes, uh, where she says these codes are too broad, and they punish all manner of expression about categories or identities of people just carte blanche. Since this, she then escalates her incrimination, then she goes after the Obama administration. She points out the 19, 19, uh, or 2013 revelations that the Obama Justice Department had secretly seized phone records of 18 journalists, not even Fox News journalists, 18 journalists. Obama's investigation, she said, had a foreign effect, criminal prosecution for providing information to the press. And this was a, the Obama's administration unprecedented attack on a free press. Why was it discovered more in the mainstream media? Accusations of hate speech and violent speech shut down good faith discussions of public policy. Very important point that she makes. Because if you're going to be canceled, if you're going to be a, a, a threatened by all sorts of means, you may be afraid to get out there and say what you really believe. Individuals who are accused of engaging in such expression can fire from positions in academia, journalism, and publishing. This oppression of speech is incalculable and in its chilling effects that it has on others. Uh, Ms. Strassen further states that many campuses, communities, students do overwhelmingly liberal or progressive. No surprise there. Uh, progressive views tend to disproportionately dominate fields that favor workers with academic degrees. And self -censor this, and this is the, the key one that really gets me, self-censorship is particularly acute amongst conservatives, libertarians, moderates, and even old-style liberals. Conservatives, anyone that you can hear me out there, it's time to stop self-censoring. It's time to go after these people with the same type of the speech that they go after us. We must not surrender. We must not surrender the field of ideas to the left. We must stand united and we must fight back against this infringement on our right to free speech, on our First Amendment rights. It's time to start fighting back. The foundation, okay. Then she goes, she was, she's a member of an organization, the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression. Published a report of campus cancellation incidents targeting faculty and, and the six years listed, documented 563 attempts to sanction faculty members for expression oh, that was constitutionally protected but controversial in the campus community. 30 tenured professors were fired for constitutionally protected speech. Enough, and this is the one that really gets me. A number of these incidents target, targeted liberal views. They were targeting liberal views espoused by liberal professors who were attacked by campus factions that were further to the left. 
So for these leftist radicals who are attacking free speech, being a run of the mill liberal isn't good enough. You gotta be a radical like them. Unacceptable. And for anybody that's interested in this very well written article, there's the link to it. Wolf Blitzel. I actually like this guy. Okay. On election night in 2016, the night Donald Trump got elected president, I was actually when the early in the night when the polls closed, I was channel surfing. I turned it to Fox News, I turned it to MSNBC, CNN, and, and the networks, and I was kind of seeing what was going on. Don't hate me for this conservatives, but I did actually end up watching CNN for, for, for the duration of the election and, and the results were coming in. And the reason I did that is because for whatever reason, they have invested the, the money in the infrastructure to be able to get precinct level results. Okay. So what, it, what ended up happening during during this whole thing, it's like at first it was like, okay, it, it's kind of tie. You know, they call the red states for Trump, the blue states for Hillary. It was like, okay, where is it going? But then it got really close in Florida. And I and you can almost see like a panic They're showing up in, in Wolf Blitzer's face and then the, the other CNN staffers around him. And then when, when Florida was finally called for Trump, you could just see full-blown panic, although they were trying to contain it. And then they started looking at states like Wisconsin, like Michigan and Pennsylvania. Those were the three swing states that finally put Trump over, over the top on the electoral college board and basically gave him the presidency. And those are the last three that were still outstanding. And it would be like Wolf Blitzer would focus in on the precincts around Detroit, Michigan, or around the precincts around uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or the ones in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And it would be like, okay, so many votes here haven't been counted, so many votes there, so many, yeah, and, and kind of doing a, 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 an analysis on it. But then he started saying things like, well, the, the Hillary Clinton campaign needs to start calling those people and, and seeing where those votes are to see if those votes are for her or those votes are for Trump. In other words, on national TV, with millions of dollars being spent to, to produce this broadcast, a, a, a newsman who's supposed to be an objective newsman reporting the news is giving the Hillary Clinton campaign campaign information and, and, and advice as to what she needs to do to try to see what the numbers are. At that point in time, CNN became, well, it already was an arm of the Democratic Party. And if you remember the whole <laughs> the thing with, with Hillary Clinton and, and Bernie Sanders, and, and, and that the Donna lady that, that was kind of helping, you know, that, that, that's another mess that I'll maybe talk about later. Okay, we're back to this, we're back to this, say, uh, statement again. Media bias against I conservatives. I told you we were going to come back to this. Okay. I believe this is proof positive that there is bias in the media. And now we're talking social media as well as regular media against conservatives. I went to Google. I typed in that exact phrase, media bias against conservatives. And the very first thing that comes up is a science.org article that says, there is no liberal media bias in which news stories and how they're told and whatever. Boom, Google. Well, of course, what do you expect? It's Google. No media bias according to Google. Well, wanting to do a little more in-depth research, I went to Facebook, which I suggest anybody here that wants to get the other side of the story that from what Google tells you, Go to freespoke.com and type in the same search on their site and see what you get just when you do your own searches. But I did. And they add, they basically uh, market themselves as the alternative to Google because they let you see all the information that the Google algorithms don't let you see. This is the first, I typed in the same thing, and, and this is the first thing that came up. A link to the Twitter accounts of Molly Hemingway, Donald Trump Jr., and Paul Joseph Watson. And I'll briefly and I'll briefly describe who, who they are. Molly Hemingway is the editor in chief for the Federalist, which I'll just say this about the Federalist. The Federalist is to the left, what the what the Church of Satan is to Christians. That's how they look at it. That's how bad the Federalist is. The Federalist is a think tank that analyzes and looks at things and puts out policy positions that the left doesn't like. Too bad. That's their right to do so. But one but, at a time. But but but. It, the whole point is this: you look at another web at another web search engine, a whole different set of, of narratives and a whole different set of, of perspectives come up. Obviously, Donald Trump has a lot, or Junior has a, Donald Trump's son has a lot to say about media bias against conservatives. Obviously, and Paul Joseph Watson, if you look him up, if you go to his Wikipedia page, like that's the you know the all end all be all of information, but it does have some good information on there at times. They'll, they'll call him a conspiracy theorist and a blogger. <laughs> but 
45 if, minutes. Okay. If you do click on, on his Twitter account, you're going to see one thing that came out very clearly that he was critical and, and he got critiqued for this and he got like banned from Twitter at the time before, you know, before Elon Musk took it over. Uh, he, he basically said something that he was, uh, well, he was, he was basically saying something bad against Peter Fonda, who made the disgusting and gross statement that Baron Trump, Trump Donald Trump's youngest son, should be thrown in a cage with pedophiles. And so he uh, criticized that, spoke out against it, and, and Twitter at the time banned him for it. So that's who he is. So yes, I can see why Google doesn't want this information to come up. I can see that. It's very clear. But then something else came up. Next week. Okay. The first article that came up is, and I, this I really wish we could see, but it basically it's an NBC News article. It's not some right wing all conspiracy alt information site. It's actually a mainstream media site that says media bias against media bias against conservatives is real, and and that's the reason people hate the news. Is basically what it says, and and yeah, and part of the reason why nobody trusts the news. If you click on that article, very interesting. I'm, I'm not going to go into a deep dive on that because of time. But that's like the first article that comes up there that Google will never, ever show you this. And it's, and, and it's not, once again, by just anybody. It's by a, or what I guess the left way I would hope to think is a reputable news source. But whatever, it's on there. You can see it for yourself. And I think we're shooting down again. But just okay. um, work your magic again. Now. All right, uh, hang on. All right, try again. OK, that was the next one. Okay, here's another search engine for you. <clears throat> here's, a, here's another search engine for, to look at. Uh, this one this one advertises itself as not taking your information you know, for, for sale or to, to advertise to you, but it's, it's out there. And I typed in the same phrase on this one and the same article, media bias against conservatives is real and part of the reason why no one trusts the media. So. Two sources you can go to if you don't trust what Google is spitting back at you. DuckDuckGo and, and Facebook. Okay. I'll just throw in this there because, yes, this is how a lot of us feel. I won't discuss it. At the, a lot of people won't agree with this, but yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is just my own little take, but CNN is... I believe I'll, I'll just call it the Clinton News Network because that's what it is, or the COVID News Network if you get into the COVID stage. MSNBC, I love this one. Make socialism normal broadcasting channel because that's what half of their people are. It's full blown uh, Bernie Sanders acolytes. Uh, or with COVID, I would say make society neurotic broadcasting coronavirus because yes, that's the other thing MSNBC does. And we've got to stand up to these people. We've got to stop taking what they say at face value because it's, and I won't say the word, but it rhymes with fit. Conclusion. Ah, did we already get this? I guess we did. That's the conclusion. We are in a situation. How much time do I have? We got about maybe 10 more minutes or so. Okay. We're in a situation where our rights are under assault. And it's not just free speech rights. It's Second Amendment rights, Fourth Amendment rights, Tenth done, Amendment rights. Are you done with the slideshow? I'm done with the slideshow. I'm going to go back to screen. Okay. So we, we are in a situation where our rights are under assault on multiple, multiple fronts by the left. We're, we have external enemies. I believe China and Russia are them, but that's another discussion for another day. But we also have people, factions within the country that don't, that want to control everybody, that don't want freedom. They use COVID to implement mandates and they've always been against the second amendment now they're against the fourth amendment and they want to nationalize everything and get rid of the tenth amendment which basically leaves power back to the states but the way we talk about this the way we get to all of this is through the first amendment through our right to free speech the right to free press there was a time and maybe this is why the left what wasn't such a big you know, stickler for this at the time and they actually believe I disagree with what you say, but I'll fight to the death your right to say it. See, because back in those days, if you wanted to express your opinion, you'd write a letter to the editor and it would go to the local newspaper and maybe a couple hundred people would read it and it'd be kind of nice and cutesy and maybe you talk about it at your cocktail parties or backyard barbecues and so-and-so wrote a letter. 
or even going back further, the town prior days where you have to actually get up or you go to a town hall meeting and maybe 100 people would hear you. Social media changed all that. Social media made it so any one of us here, if we know how to hashtag ourselves and know what keywords to use and, and, and look to the, the, you know, the drive of the, uh, the Google algorithm, might have our message seen by 100,000 people. And if we're somebody of some renown, like some of these other people that are uh, up here, or like, like a Musk or a Trump or a Biden or an Obama, then when you tweet something, it's going to be seen by maybe tens of millions of people, if not more. And it's going to get on the mainstream media news, on the evening news, and then it's really going to go viral. So with that amount of power that the average person can have, they can build up a blog following, they can do podcasts, they can get their information out there to a large group of people. It's like ideas that the left tolerated and said, okay, go ahead and say it. Only 100 people are going to hear you. Now 100,000 people are hearing you. And it might actually turn an election in the other direction. And the left doesn't like that. And that's why they're fighting so hard against it. That's why they want to cancel you. That's why they want to ban you. That's why they, you know, Elon Musk, and I was going to spend more time on, on him, and, and I know the title of my presentation was Billionaires uh, That Are Libertarian-Minded and Conservative-Minded Buying Up Media Outlets. That still needs to happen. But there's a whole nother section here, because I do want to actually do a part two on this, and the college will invite me back in the future, on some things that you all can do. I already mentioned two of them, free spoke and duck, duck, go. Start doing your search. Do a dual search. Whenever you go to Google, go to one of those other two and see what you get. If it's something like what's the best recipe for pot roast, it's probably going to be the same thing. But if it's something like, you know, media bias against conservatives, you, you better believe it's going to be vastly, vastly different because Google is trying to hide things. Google is in league with the, the, the left because they are the left. So they, they are trying to ban things. They are, uh, how much time do I have? Um, okay. About maybe five, six more minutes. Okay. So we'll go about 10 more. We'll, we'll okay. Be okay. So, once again, we are in a turning point in this time. We are at a point where our rights are under assault. And if we don't unite, if we don't fight back against this cancel culture, wokeism, against a, basically suppression of free speech, we're going to be in trouble. We're, we're not going to have a country. I started doing a deep dive and I was going to do more on the Twitter files that have been released. And, and, and they're quite extensive. From, from the very first release of Twitter files after Elon Musk took over Twitter, one of the things they mentioned is the percentage of, of Twitter employees at the time that donate money to Democrats versus Republicans. And it's vastly skewed in favor of Democrats, but no surprise there because they're all liberal, or most of them anyways. But Twitter, Elon Musk exposed that. And he went all out. He bought Twitter completely, totally, and, and absolutely. He just like totally overtook it and spent a lot of money and went into, you know, had to borrow some money, whatever. But that's what he chose to do. He chose to do that. But a lot of these other media outlets, I think, can be bought for a lot less or, or done in a slightly less uh, intense manner than, than uh, Elon Musk did. But thank God that he did it because now we know what is out there. We, we, we are seeing from the Twitter files basic cooperation with governmental agencies like the FBI and, 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 the, and the social media companies to suppress speech that, that uh, the left doesn't like. The Hunter Biden laptop fiasco should have been broadcast from day one, and I believe it would have turned enough votes if it was broadcast on the mainstream media and Donald Trump would still be our president. But the, but the media knew that. They knew that and, that, and that's why it was only on Fox News and on the New York Post and a, and a few other blogs and Twitter basically said, no, you're not broadcasting this. And then Facebook followed suit. They're in cahoots. Well, at least Facebook is still owned by Zuckerberg. So that still is kind of there. There's, and I didn't post on here because I thought I was not going to have enough time. There are a lot of other alternate news sites that you could look at. You don't just have to go to the, the three networks. You don't just have to go to CNN and MSNBC. You can really do a deep dive on this yourself. Uh, th think about think about it this way, and I'll get close to concluding here. What kind of country do you want for your kids and your grandkids? I don't want a country where if they go to college, they have to think a certain way. In college, you're supposed to learn, like, as they say, how, not what to think, but how to think, how to be, reason things on your own. And, and you'll come up with a different conclusion than the person who's sitting next to you in, in, in the same classroom will too. That's kind of how it's supposed to be. 
But no, you go to a college and, and they don't let you say certain things or you have to think certain things. It starts, it starts in the colleges, it starts in the Hollywood culture. And I would have said that 20 years ago that Hollywood and, and academia were already way to the left. But it's gotten to the point that then the mainstream media followed suit. Uh, back in the 90s, Fox News was originally started because it was perceived even back then, and it was true that CNN was starting to veer to the left. So Fox News purposely came into existence to have an alternate source of news other than, than CNN. You know, you know, back in the late 80s, early 90s, when, when you know, like the first Gulf War, for example, CNN was great back then, but back then it was more like the newsmen that I showed at the beginning of, of my presentation, where they actually covered the news. But it's gone far away from that. And now there are even some amongst my really hardcore conservative friends who will say that Fox News isn't, you know, is starting to veer back towards the center or whatever. Of course, the left will disagree with that and they want to try to cancel it, um, but it is what it is. What kind of country do we want to have? Do we want to have a country where we're free to say our opinion and even, and even be able to listen and, and and coexist with people who have the vastly different opinions? Or do we want to live in a country where we're told what to do? Remember I said at the beginning of my presentation, America is unique because of the way it was constituted. A person's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of their own happiness, the consent of the government. The left is taking us back to how things were before, to where they appoint dictators, they appoint a point uh, people that want to spy on you or check on you or, or, or see what you're up to. Uh, media moderator, content moderators, as they call them, or fact checkers and stuff. Well, I, got, I love the fact checkers. I could do a whole thing on, on them because they, they're all liberals. And, and of course, they're, gonna, they're only going to fact check conservatives. They're never going to fact check the liberal sources. So what kind of country do we want to live in? Do we want to go back to the way we were or the way the world was before America was founded? Or do we want to live in the land of liberty? The choice is yours. Thank you. David. So David, uh, over my time? No, you were fine. Go ahead and explain about the choice. Right, so, you want me to move this back? Move, just leave it. One cool, guys. Come on. I'm going to stand up there and answer questions. All right, and uh, thank our speaker. Yeah, questions and answers. Questions must be in that form. All right, Charlie, you got the. Let me get the spotlight removed here from him. Oh, it's Charlie, the first one. All right, Charlie, you got the first question. All right, I'm good. Go for it, Charlie. Go for it, Charlie. Yes, and Henry. Yes, Charlie. Our college is obligated. Uh, to allow instructors to teach things that are inaccurate. People spend money to send their kids, they say to send their kids to college. And are you inferring that a college must allow someone to be an instructor who teaches things that are not true? I, I think what you're getting at is a difference between a fact and an opinion. If something is factual, it, it, it could be independently verified. It could be experimented and observed and repeated. If something is an opinion, like I'm against suppression of speech, I, I believe in the Second Amendment, I believe in the Tenth Amendment, you, you can argue against that. And if uh, somebody in, in a college class, let's say in the political science class, wants to write an a, a essay in defense of the Second Amendment, for example, but the professor is a hardcore liberal and, and, and squelches it, well, then that's wrong. You didn't answer it. Are they obligated to allow someone they have determined to be unqualified to teach college? The premise of your question is incorrect, Charlie, because you've just appointed an arbiter of truth that gets to decide what truth is and what isn't. So, I, so it's not that I don't want to, I challenge the premise of your question that there can be an absolute arbiter and, and that it necessarily has to be a, a liberal professor who says, I'm the truth, I'm the fountainhead of truth and only what I say is true is true and therefore I'm not gonna allow it. So your, your question is faulty at its premise, Charlie. Okay. There's no standards allowed, I guess. All right, Justin, you're next. So you show a picture of the uh, white woman with the middle fingers to the black top. Call her a rioter. I believe she was. A, I believe she was Hispanic. But yeah. No, I did not call her a rioter. Yes, I, it is. 
I did not call her anything. I said, I, I, she was in the group of rioters and protesters, but she herself was obviously not rioting. She was standing. You, you referred her as a rioter. So, okay, I'm glad that you. Uh, uh, she was in a group of rioters, but she herself was not rioting at that point. She was raising her two middle fingers to the laptop. Okay, so um, so you say that, uh, so Fox News is is like the most watched cable news. That, that's influenced the Nielsen ratings. So if, if Fox News is the most rated, aren't they, how could they not be considered mainstream media? No, I did say that. I, if, you, if you go back to one of my early slides, I did say that the right wing mainstream media is mainly Fox News and other smaller outlets. But I don't then all the others are, you know, all the other outlets. So I listed a whole bunch of them. I don't recall you making the distinction between right wing and. It was in my slide. And, uh, it was in my slide. Uh, mainstream. It was in my slide. Okay, Jake, you're next online. We'll get you that. We'll get you yeah, that. hi. Thank you for your talk. Um, could you repeat your name and affiliation? I didn't catch that earlier. I don't have an affiliation other than I'm speaking on my own behalf. My name is Enrique Perez. Okay, Jake. And and I put okay. it myself and, and on the on the college of complexes on, on the description for my talk tonight there's a brief description of who i am and some of the yeah, jake like jake goes by phone all right we're gonna get uh, uh we're gonna get uh go ahead sid go ahead sid there oh um i'm 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 gonna i'm gonna pass go ahead do you think we ought to tell the truth about Slavery in the United States? Yes. Or do you think it never happened? Of course it happened. Slavery, slavery is an ancient evil that has existed for thousands of years. And you know what? Slavery still exists. And we can get into the, the, the evilness of slavery. And yes, it did exist in this country. It's a, what some have called this country's original sin. So of course it existed. And, and, and a war was fought to abolish it, a very bloody war. Okay, yeah. uh, Sharon, you're next online. Um, okay, hi. Um, I'm just wondering if the speaker is aware that these uh, the news outlets, and I'm putting that in quotes, are um, in the business of selling advertising. That's what they exist for. They're not really there for information, and um, with with it just you know a select few. I mean. You know, if you if you look at the AP or Reuters, you're probably going to get something that's actual news. Everything else is just entertainment, and that's a choice, a personal choice of an, of people. I, I think if you go back to one of the early slides I presented, where a couple was deciding what to watch, and they said yes, right wing and left wing, and obviously everyone from Fo I'll name the big three: Fox News, CNN, and MSNBC. They all have commercials. And they all sell products, and they because they exactly. Have to... Stop. Yeah, yeah it's it's so... He wants to ask a question. It, it, it should have turned off, but yeah, like, where's the? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we got the whole speech and everything, though, right? Yeah. The whole speech here, just this last part. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yes, hi. Um, I'm Ellen. Uh, yes, I agree with a lot of what you said and appreciate it. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I. And I was a teacher in the 80s, uh, teaching mass media at high school, it was required. And it, it really is an important subject to be taught in the school. Where, what's frustrated me is that, and I guess the kind of difference between your spin on it and mine is I, I see a media bias, but not toward conservatives. I, they threw me off for- What's your question? Okay, I'm getting to that. Um, for the vaccine, you know, it was the vaccine, just interesting the word vaccine or virus or science would be thrown off of Facebook. And I thought so there needed to be a scientific a, analysis, a, right? Um, and so uh, I'm getting to the question, okay? Uh, what, what thing do you, are you aware of the fairness doctrine and how William Casey and Reagan administration, the Justice Department, the CIA, Threw out the fairness doctrine in the eighties. The Federal Communication Commission had a rule in there since nineteen forty-eight. The I haven't finished. Okay, just shut the fuck up, Justin. <laughs> oh my. Okay, you you're just, you're trying to kill meaning, the control of meaning. I think there is a right-wing libertarian. Justin. 
question. Right. Agreement on things. You know, have the media work together for an independent. It's not normal. The right or the left. Of it should be the independent and it should be non-political. Stop it, Dylan. It's CIA Stop it. All right, go ahead. Answer right, I'll, I'll attempt to answer the question through the comments. Okay. Sharon, right? Or Ellen. 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 Okay. Ellen. Um, in all the time that I've been getting up in front of a crowd and speaking to people, and this is going back to high school and definitely in college. When I used to go to student government meetings and, and, and say something about whatever they were going to vote on or whatever, whenever I felt personally that my right to free speech was being attacked or assaulted, it was always, always by the left, never by the right. Never once has a conservative Republican attacked my right to free speech. I've gone in, in I, I have gone in front of conservative leading people and, and started talking about liberal stuff. I, I lived in Chicago for a long time and I interacted with, you know, there were two, there were two types of, 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 Chicago, of Democrats in Chicago. There's the progressives and there's the Al Capone Democrats, like the Mayor Daley and Ron Emanuel that basically run the city and stuff. And I was, I took sides with the progressives because I saw how corrupt the, the, the Daily machine was at the time. But that's in Chicago because there are no Republicans or conservatives in Chicago. But in other parts of the country, there are. And when I was speaking to conservatives and to Republicans, I never once had my rights. Uh, I was never heckled. I was never stopped. I, I was, even if I said something that sounded liberal or was liberal, they accepted it. It's only when I speak to a liberal crowd that you, I get the pushback. And it's only when others speak to a liberal crowd that I see them getting the pushback. So you're, you're talking about some kind of group think libertarian thing out there that, that's been created. Left and right, started the, 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 right, and who created that? You know? the, um, well, see, and then the, the, the perception. Well, I, I guess you know the question. Oh, yeah. The perception was that CNN was heading to the left, and I agree, it was. Uh, maybe it may be imperceptibly at the time. Maybe Fox one commentator. That, well, Fox was created be specifically to be a counterbalance. <laughs> it's right to say Fox is right wing because it is, uh, and compared to CNN, which is way left wing. But it, you, it's a counterbalance. It's a counterbalance. Okay. Yeah, okay. A balance of extremes. One American needs. And Who's now is that a question? Let's move on, please. And they may never will. And that's why. I, and that's why I said, but those days are gone. And and that in, and that includes and that includes. Next question. All right. Let's move on to the next question. Let's move on to the next question. Dan and Lana, you got your online. Go ahead, Dan. Okay. My question, Enrique. Hi. How are you? Que pasa? You want to show yourself, Dan? Okay. I I want to know: Have you ever heard Enrique? How are you? I'm. A, I'm a, how are you? Okay. Have you ever heard of Lee Camp or Chris Hedges? These are two left left of CNN. They're socialists who were taken off of YouTube, Twitter. There, they uh, Lee Camp was on, and Chris Hedges were on RT. Their their pay, their programs were removed from YouTube. Have you ever heard of them? They're left wing. No, I have not heard of them. Okay, maybe you should learn. Okay, thank you. I, I uh, what was what, okay? If YouTube and and this, if you go back to the part of my presentation, because I thank you for the slide. <laughs> Get in like that. If you go back to one of the slides that I presented by, by Strassen, where the where the liberal professors were being attacked by those even further to so uh, I know and YouTube uh, took out these YouTube videos, but I do know that yes, even sometimes those on the left get attacked by those further on the left, and and that's part of what I presented that the left. The left, you know who the left attacked really badly through CNN uh, was, was, was uh, Bernie Sanders when he when he was running against Hillary Clinton. And Bernie Sanders, you know, CNN teamed up with Hillary Clinton to give her the questions ahead of time 
and, and, and remember the, the whole Donna Brazil scandal, and she even admitted it after the fact when it was first reported, Fox News was saying it, nobody believed it, but then Donna Brazil herself finally admitted it. That yeah, she gave Hillary the questions and, and that was to Bernie and, and, and so yes, okay. but that conspires against its own if, if they're not no, no, but it's, so it's I'm, I'm answering your question. So your two two YouTubers that you mentioned, they're obscure. So no, I don't know about them. But if they got removed, then that's something that they should not have gotten removed unless they were espousing right. violence or, or, or something right. like that. So, and, and there, there's actually another left-leaning gal I'll mention it, that I was going to mention that kind of falls in that category, Glenn Greenwald, who used to be or is left, but he's now actually a Fox News commentator because that's that's the only place he can get his brand of leftist uh, ideology out. So yes, it, it happens across the board. If, if you've got the, the, the knives going in every direction and you're trying to hit the enemy, which is the right, or the Republicans and conservatives, you're eventually gonna do some friendly fire action and hit one of your own. And lately it's been happening a lot. Okay, okay. I got a question that's probably plagues most of the older men of Fox for many years, for uh, many years. Who, which networks, has the cutest girls on them. Oh, God. <laughs> they all do. Depending on where you look. <laughs> no, that's all right. I just had to, I had to pick a little bit of the idiot here. Yes. So. All right. Yeah, they, uh, they, they all go. All right. And uh, Andy's a got a question. Well, this gentleman had a question too. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I can't see how you can say that, that CNN was mainstream and turn to the left. I think it was pretty much to the left from the Ted Turner's invention of it. Well, I won't argue with you on that though. I'll, I'll, I'll take that as, a, as an affirmation of much of what I just said. But I, I guess I'm going back to when they covered the first Gulf War uh, because I was very familiar. I had a brother who was in that. And, and, and back then, at least the reporting they did on the ground in places like Kuwait and places like Iraq was to, was to the point, what was almost reminiscent of the Walter Cronkite days. They were actually reporting the news in the, in the early 90s when they were having, but it was in the mid 90s that they really started going far left. But I, I won't disagree with your point because I think it affirms what I just well, said. Well, even Cronkite has always been had a, a liberal bias. It's just not as bad as now. It once was a conspiracy. Now it's wide out in the open. They were able to contain their leftist ideations very well at the time. Okay, uh, Andy has answered the question yet. We'll get him, then we'll go to Charlie, and then back. And then, no, we'll go to you after uh, Andy because you haven't had one yet. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, Project Censored out of Sonoma State that published a book every year? Uh, 2022, it says State of the Free Press. And can't hear. All right, hand Andy the microphone. I'm, I'm not. You can repeat the question. Okay, Andy. I just, just. I, I kind of heard you. Go ahead and say it again. I was asking uh, throughout your talk, you didn't mention there's a uh, what what you can tell us about uh, what I consider one of the premier free speech uh, forums in the country. It's censored news. They publish a book every year with the top 25 stories that are censored by the media, and they teach journalism students how to sort through media bias on both sides. Are you familiar with that program? No, I'm not familiar with the program, but I would love to learn more about it. It's world famous. Okay. Okay, thank okay you. now who's uh no, let, I'll get him next because he has next question, then Charlie, then Justin. <laughs> and then the mic and uh, we thank you sir for your patience. Go ahead. You mentioned that there was a failed uh, breaking attempt on the White House and Bloomberg's Can you hear him? Yes, I heard him. Just, just, just Google it. Well, yeah, it even, it even came up. No, I can't hear. Okay, we're, we're having trouble. Use the mic. It's louder for you. you just speak louder. It was, it, it was part, it was, if you remember, it was louder. Riots and looting that was blowing up all over the country in big cities, Washington, DC had it. The church was just a couple blocks away from the White House. That was burned. There was a group of people, I remember it was, it was in the news at the time, that there was a, a mob approaching the White House. And there was the police set of barricades. And, and obviously, this was before January 6th. And they Give were, him the mic. They were trying to get in there. But, but they were unsuccessful in terms of their attempt to, to break in. But the Secret Service 
thought it, thought it that it was important enough to evacuate President Trump at the time. And it, it was it was it was an ongoing thing. It started in the day and it, it went at night. No, that was a bit no, that was after the fact. That was after it had quelled. And I know a lot on the left were upset that he, you know, he made the, the public appearance or whatever. But but what I but what I'm saying is it, it, it to the point you just raised, it kind of goes just to your point about how it happened. Uh, and I pointed in my in the way Antifa camouflage uh, the slide that I showed that a lot of it starts out during during the summer of love and riots that happened in, after George Floyd's death. Started out with a group of people, largely a thousand people, protesting peacefully, marching, carrying banners, and whatever. But then, as nightfall came, that's when the violence starts. That's when the burning of the building starts. The Ellie Belsey clip that I showed you that was at night. All a lot of the burnings and, and stuff happened at night. And so it's like you have a second group of people that would come out and would start doing all the all the bad behavior. Same thing with the White House. It could have started out as just a peaceful protest at the White House, but then the bad elements came out and started trying to break into the White House. The Secret Service was really scared at the time. They thought Donald Trump was in danger, so they evacuated him to the to the shelter. And in my humble personal opinion, we can disagree on this. The Capitol was breached on January 6th, partly because the Capitol Police didn't uh, act strongly enough and they didn't call out the National Guard like they had indications that stuff was going to happen. But in the, in the case of the Secret Service, they took their job seriously and they said, we're protecting this president, we'll, we'll do it by force. And they did what they have to do. So all I'm saying in that whole clip is, if January 6th was an insurrection, then May 30th was an attempted because the White House was just as much the people's house as the Capitol building. And I'll throw in the Supreme Court with all the protests that happened. They never got as violent. You know, when that whole Roe v. Wade thing went down, they started, you know, the protesters started going after that, but luckily it didn't escalate to that level. But I would argue the Supreme Court as a third branch of government is also the people's house. We're going to go to Charlie and then back to Justin. So, Charlie, go ahead. No, I did not. Uh, okay. I, I did not say that. Okay. Uh, I think it's my turn, please. Charlie's. Okay. Charlie, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Enrique. Yes, Charlie. What can I do for you? Please ask the audience to contain them quietly. Charlie, there's other people speaking over you. All right, Charlie, go ahead. Go for it, Charlie. All right, Enrique. Yes. Since the onset, all sorts of questions have been raised by the journalist community that Fox did not qualify as a news source. Do you maintain this criticism or Wait. analysis was incorrect? Did I hear it correctly? Facts do not qualify as a news source? Right. I, There's all sorts of things. I would think that's You're the, well aware that arguments have been raised that it does not qualify as a legitimate source of information. Of course it does. Fox News is a, a station that has its ideological leanings, just like MSNBC, you know, the Make Social World, uh, Socialism Normal Broadcast Channel and CNN, the Clinton News Network. So Fox News has the right to broadcast and they have the reporters out on the field, just like CNN and, and MSNBC. But it's once they look at the same news items, they don't cover it the same way, or there's some things that CNN and MSNBC <laughs> avoid completely. Like the Why, follow up. Why then was the government going to reclassify it for political purposes recently? The, Wait, the, the, the election commission was reviewing its status. Wait, you got to ask your question again, Charlie, because there's too many people speaking above you. The, the, question again. the election federal election commission was reviewing the status of fox as an independent news media as opposed to political uh, we got it you mean the you, you you mean a government agency that has appointees by the biden administration uh, all of these don't, don't try to kill the messenger do you want me to answer the question charlie all of these try to kill the messenger their commissioners that they vote on a two to three basis or whatever it is. If Fox did something against election laws, 
The Federal Election Commission will get to it and bring charges, can issue fine, and Fox News can challenge it in court. It's called having your day in court. So uh, an accusation is not guilt. And it sounds like just because that the Federal Election Commission said something against Fox, that that's automatically a sign of guilt. No, it's a sign that three out of five commissioners think that Fox News is not a good source. So I'm, I'm going to be very skeptical on that until more comes from it. Okay, just uh, um, point, point of order. Point of order. The, um, there's a difference between Fox News and Fox and Friends. Fox, uh, Fox and Friends and Tucker Carlson has admitted in court it's an entertainment show and not a news organization. Calvin, we'll get you next after Justin. Okay. All right. Go so, ahead, Justin. As I think Charlie and Kelvin were both trying to pick Loud, so, Justin. I think. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but the guys in the back okay, can. Go ahead. So, uh, so the Dominion lawsuit has shown that people at Fox, their text messages, show that they are contradicting. You know, they behind the scenes they don't think election fraud happened, this and that, but they were saying that election fraud was happening on. Fox. So uh, to Charlie, you know, to what Charlie and I guess Calvin was trying to say, how can this be considered legit? You know, if you're contra if you're, you know, basically caught telling lies, can you really be a legitimate news source? You know, like CNN giving Hillary Clinton the questions ahead of time. It happens to everybody. You didn't answer that. Doesn't answer my. Right. Uh, that's a what about ism. That's a that's no, a that's a that's not. a logical well, let me, fallacy. Let me, let me, no, it's not. It's it's an active court case. Let it play itself out. Let it get itself okay, in so front of a true. jury. All so right, just no, I'm not going to assume it's true. Just you, you are not the trier of fact. And even the judge, laugh all you want, but you're laughing at snipe, and I'll, I'll call you out on it. You are not the trier of facts. And so your question has, a, 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 you want to talk about logical fallacy? You're the logical fallacy for even bringing it up. Okay. The logical fallacy. The, the, all right, all right, all right. All right. The trier of fact is the jury, and when the jury renders a verdict, then we could be sure that it really happened. Okay, Kelvin, go ahead. Unmute and get your question in, please. Unmute, Kelvin. There's a difference between Fox and Friends and uh, Fox News. Uh, Tucker Carlson has put a, it's a defense in court against it on a defamation, uh, de defamation, uh, or a defamation for a libel case was that you, this is not a news show. This is an entertainment show and cannot be taken as such by anybody seriously. And that's what he said, sworn in court. And what's your question? Well, it did, well he, he said it's not a news show. He went up in court and his lawyers said, this is an entertainment show, not a, new, not a, news, not a news show and cannot be taken by anybody seriously. I disagree. No, that's what he said. He swore to it in court. L listen, listen, okay, Calvin, listen carefully. Uh, there is another newscaster who I, uh, is, I think, now number two, because Tucker Carlson, I think, has risen to the top in the ratings amongst newscasters, and that's Sean Hannity. And Sean Hannity is, is very famous for saying that he's not a newscaster, he's not a journalist. He is yeah, a and so is Tucker Carlson. So is Tucker Carlson. Look it up. Do you want me to find I'll, I'll, I'll find you the link. Tucker Carlson. I'll post the link. And, I'll post you, the link. and you can listen to him. And, and if you don't agree with him, you don't have to listen to him. That's the easiest. I'll post the link. He's not, he's it, it, it's, it's not, it's not a new show. Yeah, but this goes back to the whole thing of my presentation. You're free to shut the TV off. You don't have to listen to him if you don't agree with him. But don't try to squelch him. Don't try to keep me or anyone else in one. Don't try to say it's a new show when he's saying it's not. By the way, Tucker Carlson is at the top of the heap right now. The number one, uh, basically, personality on cable TV over all of them, over all the CNN and MSNBC people. Okay, so, yes, go to okay, you, you can go ahead and, and, and say what you want. Just turn off the TV. Okay, uh, Justin and Charlie. Go ahead, Justin. Okay, okay so... Uh, I said we're going to report, so I forgot what I was going to do. Justin, all right. Well, then we'll. But, uh, so you, uh, so, um, oh gosh. So, uh, look like your pots are closed. So. I think so, but uh, we should move on to Charlie. Yeah, if you go to Charlie, while I think about it. Charlie, you go ahead. I have a quick question. Who does? Yes. Uh, no, no, all wait. right. Um, 
Got somebody in the back. Justin. Presentation. I found. Henry. Henry. Sir. We got one guy who hasn't had a question yet, so let him. Sir. Is that uh, the last election? No, there were, that was 2016. Yeah, no, yeah, that was 2016. Yeah, 2016. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So who's next? Charlie is next. Okay. Go ahead, Charlie. Yes, sir, uh, Enrique. Please you indicated that fewer reporters are identified as being conservative or Republican. Aren't in general fewer people in this country I being identified on a daily basis, fewer and fewer as conservative or Republican? You can argue that there's differences in how many conservatives, how many liberals, and how many moderates are in the country. And yes, sometimes the, the election goes to the Democrats, sometimes it goes to the Republicans, but we're talking a range of 45-55 or 55-45. The statistics I presented show That's the nice. media being 90% leftist or Democrats. So they skew way, way, even the election of, of, of 96, where Bob Dole got his you know, butt kicked by like eight, nine points, which was like considered a political landslide, they, yeah, that small margin because of how the country generally is polarized to their extremes. The and only thing your, your statistics showed were how the, who they voted for president, sir. I showed other things as well. That is all it showed. It yeah, was based on who they voted for president. No, that he could vote for president on a multitude of reasons. Charlie, you're incorrect. I showed other. That was one of the statistics I showed, but I did show others. And I can. My conclusion was, and still is, the media is not representative of the American populace. It is way to the left. It is not representative of the average American. And I stand by that firmly. Can you tell tell something about me solely on the basis of who I voted for president in 10 different elections? Well, you in particular, Charlie, I know you personally and I know where you stand and I've heard you speak and I see your Bernie Sanders and, and Green Party signs behind you. So I know where you stand. You've made yourself clear and we're just not going to agree. Okay, enough said. Justin, last question. All right, so if uh, let's say a group of people want to get together and put pressure on Tucker Carlson's advertising to uh, drop advertising and, and let's say effectively it, it knocks Tucker Carlson off the air. Were his First Amendment rights violated? No, but here's but here's what I'll add. There is a every time, and, and it, it happens more to the right than to the left, but it, I imagine it happens to both. Whenever somebody gets pissed off at some right wing commentator, there, the left organizes a boycott. I could think of smaller, medium sized business chains and bigger names that have been boycotted. But if the right organizes, and this does happen almost just as often, the right counters and organizes a boycott where we purposely go out and start buying the product and counter the lost revenue. It's all about free choice. If for whatever reason Tucker Carlson were to lose all advertisers, my first instinct would be well, other advertisers would step in. That's my, and, and to more than make up for it. But in your hypothetical, let's say everybody found him so horrible, they, they, they didn't get any, and they wanted, and they wanted to, you know, if Fox News wanted to throw him out, well then Fox News is a private business. They could dump him and he can go find some other channel to, to go to. But it's not going to happen because Tucker, there'll be somebody that'll do it because just every time there's a boycott, there's a fight and it's organized. It's just as ferocious. Keep going. I just, just okay. can't. Who's All next? right. Uh, Who's next? I need to digress just a minute to check on a, on a quick technical issue real fast. So just bear with me for a minute. Um, I just need to check something on the Zoom account to make sure we're, we're good to go with recording. So please bear with me for a second, please. Um, just, just hold on. Um, I know you guys can see me out here. Just basically give me a uh, okay. minute or two to get my, uh, oh God, come on. Um, I, I guess this one's not working. Uh, hang on just a second here, please. Uh, it's gonna take another second here just to check this out real quick. So bear with me, please. We're gonna go to rebuttals anyway. Um, 
Never mind. Uh, let's thank our speaker. Uh, yeah, let's let's. Uh, all right, let's thank, thank our you. speaker. Thank all right, you. we're gonna go to rebuttals now. And, and I'll just say I appreciate those who yelled at me the most because they keep me on my toes. So okay, you now what we're gonna do? Joseph. I'm gonna apportion four minutes to everybody else, whether it be online first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the podium again. We're gonna pull out the podium. We're gonna let you come up. We're gonna let you uh, take about four minutes of time and uh, get behind the mic so that you can use it. And then that way we can hear from everybody. Okay. We'll go with the first two. On Tim, where do you want me to sit? While uh, just sit down anywhere where you want to be comfortable. Uh, Ernie, we'll get to you after we get to the first two online. I have got just a brief minute here to find out what the hell is going on with my damn account. Bear with me for a minute, please. I'm hoping I don't have, we keep we keep losing our recordings here, but we'll be all right in just a second. I just need to check one thing here real quick. Can't get into my stupid account. Just Tim, give, Tim during the rebuttals, I just keep quiet. Yeah, that's exactly correct. You get the last word. I can do that. All right. Uh, all right. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. Who's got the first rebuttal from the crowd here? All right. I'm going to let Dave go, and then we're going to let you go. Um, all right. And then we're going we're gonna to alternate after we do the first two here. Uh, then we'll alternate between online and, and live. So we're going to go with David Zucker first, and then Sid Cohen, and then we'll go to Ernie Norman. I need I need somebody to stay here and just make sure that the recording's on. All right, Tim, you want me to start? Yeah, go ahead and start. All right, I have come so over to talk to you at the college. This is more of a higher report than I did with Mike. I'm not going to get into all of that. I was thinking here all night at the end. But I will say simply this. We tried to portray the, the disturbance of the White House analogous to what happened at the Capitol in January 6th. Mike, Mike, speak into the mic. Mike. Mike. The riot at the White House was not funded by government officials. And the riot at the Capitol was certainly stirred up by Donald Trump. And it was he who held back the National Guard and the troops from putting down the riot at the Capitol until finally Mike Pence, no liberal he, own life was on the line at that point until he and others demanded that something be done. Well, something finally was. Thank you. All right, who's uh, next? All right, uh, do we want to, let's uh, get Sid. Uh, let's just uh, get to the mic. Sure. When you want to get to the mic. Um, all right, well, grab, grab the mic, or yeah. I'll grab the mic. I'd like to speak. All right. Oh. <laughs> Actually, when we look back at history, we find that after World War II, the United States had this um, member of the cabinet. His name was Bean Atchison. Bean Atchison got a lot of people together. Um, contractors for war munitions, bankers, and people in the higher uh, segment of the American ruling class. And he gave a speech in front of them saying that we, need, we didn't actually get out of the depression because of Roosevelt. We got out of depression because of World War II. Because around 1937, the unemployment level started to go back up. And it was only World War II that actually got us out of the depression. At that particular time, Henry Wallace was vice president. And he wanted to run again as president. And he tried to do that, but they wouldn't allow him. 
he was at Wrigley Field giving the speech, and I was there after the war. And he talked about that, that we could have peace with the Soviet Union. But then the United States comes out and says the Soviet Union is the new aggressor and is taking place of Nazi Germany. And we have to protect ourselves and we have to produce a lot of armaments in order to do that. Well, the armaments got us out of the depression. So what they wanted was a permanent war economy. With a permanent war economy, we would be safe from another Great Depression and things would be a lot better. And that's exactly what we've done. Uh, Henry Wallace was not named, named as president or as nominee under the Democratic Party. But he, what he did, he had his own party, the Progressive Party. And they tried to stop the Cold War. The Cold War was a, was a fable made up by the administration at that time, the Truman administration. And Truman was nothing but a hack from the Pendergast machine in Missouri. And at the time, at the end of the war, the Soviet Union lost 20 to 30 million people. It lost a lot of its capacity to produce arms. But the United States had that capacity and wanted to be number one imperialist in the world. It had the Monroe Doctrine. And they said, Latin America is our backyard. And they kept the Cold War and they kept it going. And that's why the Soviet Union eventually fell because it was trying to keep up with the United States. So the fact is the United States needs a permanent war economy and the people in power cannot be liberal, cannot be progressive, and that's what we have now. Okay, Charlie, and Ernie, you're next. Ernie, you're next on your rebuttal. No. Ernie, yeah, now, Ernie, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, Enrique, thank you for a very interesting talk. Well presented, lots of, uh, uh, I like to be able to read what's going on as well. Some good visual aids. Uh, I consider myself a progressive liberal, uh, voted for Bernie Sanders more than once and uh, vote for liberal candidates, particularly on the economic issues. Nonetheless, I agree with you that the media is pitifully uh, and and very much in favor of uh, liberals. And I'm, I'm not even going to look at the, the politics as you did of, of where these people voted and so on and so forth. If you just listen to them on certain stories, just the the adjectives they use, the words they use, uh, the the uh, their tone of voice, et cetera, it's very clear that they're, they're uh, biased toward uh, liberal issues. And I, I'm, I, you know, I, I share their view, but I don't think the media should be that way. I think it should be more unbiased. Another thing which bothers me a lot, and I didn't hear you talk too much about this, and that is social media. Your, the promo for your talk tonight talked about Elon Musk buying Twitter and how other organizations might be better off with that. Uh, they're trying to do some censorship Facebook and other groups are doing censorship, um, and it's not government censorship, but it's still censorship. They decide what is hate speech, what is not, what I am allowed to say or what I'm not allowed to say, and and um, what I'm allowed to read and not read on, on their sites. Uh, this bothers me a great deal. To me, freedom of speech means freedom of speech. It doesn't mean freedom of speech unless, of course, you say something I don't like. It means freedom of speech. You have the right to say things I don't like. 
and and uh, uh, other people have the the right to to do that as well. And I have the right to say things which which are unpopular. However, we really don't have that freedom. We can easily be uh, we can be fired, we can be shunned, we can be rejected in various ways if we express views that are not considered centrist or acceptable. And uh, I think that there's a certain amount of pain that goes with the freedom of speech. And that is you occasionally have to listen to things you really don't wanna hear. Uh, but unless we can do that, we don't have freedom of speech. Uh, and it's, it's not entirely up to the media. It's, entire, it's up to the rest of us as well. And as far as social media, they are almost as important now as the broadcast media. And I'm, I'm hearing that they're doing censoring. Of course, all media, including the printed media, uh, do censorship based on the stories they choose to cover. Some stories they don't choose to cover or they cover it uh, from one side or the other. And uh, I, I disagree with that. Things should be, both sides of stories should be covered. And uh, to that extent, I, I agree with you. I, I don't think that the world is going to hell because it's becoming more liberal. But I do think that the media is very biased uh, toward the liberal side of things. Uh, thank you again for your talk. Okay. Uh, why don't you, if you want to, uh, uh, it would be preferred if you did. That, that way we could start using the... Uh, I know our speaker had preferences. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Just, just hold it. You just put it right in there. You see that right center, right in there. Yeah, just put it right in yeah. there. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, sorry I got loud there, um, but I think that was an excellent talk. I think it's a great subject. Um, as I said, I agree with you, except there's a that I I've noticed this that. You know, I listen to someone, they go, finally, they're saying it. And then they say, and that's why we like Trump. And they, they always, all the libertarians seem to conclude with that. And uh, what I see, I, I was raised by a Ayn Rand libertarian, uh, Wall Street, um, you know, first stepfather. And, um, and, so, and so I, you know, believed everything they said. And, but then I got to know uh, a man who's kind of like Sid here, who he was like, if he had Asperger's, mm -hmm. his was what was Jesus really saying, rather than yeah. so really more a progressive rather than capitalism as a good, you know, as a standard or a philosophical end means. And, um, and so I look for the moral imperative that. And for that reason, the media has to be balanced and fair and balanced, like the FCC in 1948 put in the fairness doctrine with the idea of they're like Voice of America can be indoctrinating <coughs> the world to make them not communist. And it was basically this anti communist Cold War uh, takeover, really, of the world that was implemented by the Democrats, but it, this is the democratic deep state, really the military industrial national security state. And so you can say, okay, the best way to fight that is we'll have you know libertarians or we'll have Green Party or we'll have a you know a fair election and a Republican. Or, but what it turns out is all those parties are kind of like a culture war and they're using our media. They, they have stolen, they, they violated the monopoly laws and antitrust, you know, with getting rid of the fairness doctrines and putting in the telecommunications act. Again, this was done by Newt Gingrich, just as part of the, the contract with America. This is, um, you know, they, they said, we're gonna make it easy for, you know, it's really Roger Ailes that did it and, um, underneath that new geek bridge and big army and this plan that they put in every plank of the contract America. I mean, you know, uh, strong police, you know, three strikes are out, anti-welfare, you know, and this let's, we, we don't, you can consolidate the media monopoly with the press monopoly. And so now you see, there's a great documentary, JFK and the, um, the, uh, 
second murder of JFK in the media, where they showed that when um, the, uh, what was his name, um, you know, was in, in New Orleans, was trying to prosecute who murdered JFK. It turned, it was a coordinated CIA, FBI, you know, dirty, you know, you with the mafia, drugs, you know, murder, yeah, assassination of Kennedy, the same thing they did to Martin Luther the King, complexes. they've done to presidents all through South America, Remember Vietnam, Indonesia, Japan, America it. is a, it's a Nazi state. That was the plan. And actually they ended the war. They, um, <coughs> John, John Foster or Alan Dulles and Reinhard Gellin no. and Barbie mm -hmm. and Foreman and they um, Atlines to bring the Nazis, the worst war criminals, and place them in positions to kill all the communists, the Sandinistas. You know, we we create as we're doing with the Ukraine right now. The OUN is a Republican. They were brought in, and they are a neo-Nazi group under Bandera. You know, they are. Um, we basically, you know, we divided North and South Vietnam. We. Now we're trying to get China, we want to get Russia. We create a war, and this is how they're using the media. This is the problem. It's not a war on the left or the right. It's the na national security state, an invisible parapolitical okay. state led by the United States, the Mossad, the, and probably even Putin, and he's probably in on it. The bankers are, are setting up okay. this culture war, and they've taken over this for a globalist great reset, and so we, I, my issue, I'll be in Atlanta next week fighting to stop this bio warfare attack with the virus and the vaccine, which is the real violation of our rights. And okay. It's killing us all, population control. All right, Charlie, you're online. Go ahead and give your rebuttal. All right, Charlie, you're on. All right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank our speaker for a nice presentation, well thought out. Um, and thank you for the PowerPoint presentation, which took some time to put together. And I'm looking forward to part two, as you recommended or suggested. Okay, I will cover three specific areas. Three areas. One, we have seen an example right now. The presentation was largely truth by example. Unfortunately, for every example, there is a counterexample. And you never arrive at the truth. So a collection of examples, I'm not certain what you arrive at at the end uh, uh, by this assemblage. But yes, for every example, there's a counterexample. Number two, uh, there's no such thing, and get this out of your mind, that there has to be a forced imbalance, a forced imbalance in reporting the news. Yeah, what are you suggesting? That 50% of the news be legitimate and 50% be pure nonsense? Or that's what we have to do at the college complexes. I have to sit you and listen to people who are nonsensical. <laughs> I, I'm not certain if the media is under any such obligation or standard. Uh, and it leads me into the third point. The real problem is that conservatives have to clean up your act. You cannot continue to present arguments that are not legitimate and expect to be given attention. You want equal attention to be given, well then come up with legitimate arguments and positions. We saw that in the presentation. The conservatives are trying desperately to present arguments that the events on January 6th, one of the darkest days in the history of this country, and the individuals responsible should not be completely and totally held accountable for what took place. That is, and to say, well, this should be reported on. So I, I'm sorry, you are completely wasting my time uh, 
as recip as a someone attentive to the news. You present arguments that are completely strange. I use the term strange and goofy. You're not going to have much of an audience. And don't blame the media media system at large because they fail to give you time at the on the on the air. Clean up your act, come up with legitimate positions of political science or an analysis, and I'm certain you will be allowed to speak. Uh, that's all I have to do. If you want to continue down this road, you can see it uh, by looking at some of the websites. Uh, there's things on there that are uh, just spin. If you're going to continue to present spin and demand that your spin be given equal time, that's not what we need. And that's not what they meant mean by balance. Anyhow, thank you very much. I enjoyed it. All right, Kelvin, you've been putting your hand up in there. Yeah, I, I do apologize. I am late to the discussion. Um, but some of the um, statements made that the left to the, the media is left in America is ludicrous. Uh, the, the media in America, from, and I want to watch a fair bit of it, is it's corporate Democrats. You see it on MBS, and they are all corporate Democrats. And if you want any verification of this, look at how they handled the raising of the minimum wage and the vote in Congress. The, uh, the, the, the deferential treatment they gave to Cinema and Mansion and their betrayal of uh, the people who voted for them was, was scandalous. Um, Fox Media is not, it's not news, I'm sorry, but it's not. It is, and the, the defamation, uh, the Dominion case proved that they were, they were printing, they were, they, were, they were transmitting lies for the sake of ratings. And, but, and, and it was, all comes down to corporate money and corporate ratings. They're in the business of making money. They're not in the business of changing the side. If they, if they are against, and I, I also um, take umbrage with the term conservative for the Republican Party at the moment. The Republican Party at the moment is not conservative. It's populist. It's, it's bordering, it, well, it's not bordering on fascism. It's, it's, it's fascism. Uh, but the corporate media aren't going to come out and say this because the corporate media have, have their money invested in, a, in, a, in an election. Now, for example, they'll, they'll, they'll cover uh, Roger Sanchez's anti wokeness all day long. Will they go down to Florida and say what a terrible job he's doing as a governor? Will he go down to Florida and show uh, what, how inadequate? His, um, his, his provisions he did for Hurricane Ian, that he didn't even get a temporary shelter set up until, May, until December 10th, when the, uh, when the hurricane happened in October. No, because they're, they're invested in the tight race. So they don't, don't, don't think that, they, they, that you've got a, a left corporate media, you have a, a, a left media, you have a corporate Democrat media. Thank you. Okay, uh, Sharon, you want to go next? Go ahead. Don't forget to unmute, Sharon. Yep. Um, so I think I almost forgot my thought here. Um, oh, you know, I think uh, I'm going back to my uh, uh, the, the notion that the problem really is the people. Um, and also it's um, all the media, including the internet and things on cable or whatever um you know there's so much of it and uh you know the the speed at which information is transported or transferred is just gotten faster and faster over years and decades right so i think that in a way the people haven't learned really how to deal with all this information reasonably um it just seems my perspective, you know, you, you, you actually just discount about 98% of what you hear and see on news or social media and, uh, you know, try and find the sources that are more reliable. But 
uh, people don't do that, and the networks um, see that people are, um, they seem to be addicted to outrage. So they give the people what it seems like the people want. And I think, um, I think the people have to wise up and learn how to say no to a bunch of garbage um, and, and to, to think a little more critically. And, I, and then that would have to educate and how poorly educated we are, at least here in the United States uh, these years. Uh, and that's essentially all I have. Okay, I'm going to do a quick rebuttal myself. And we're going to go up to the front here so I can be clearly heard by everybody. Justin, if you mind, please report and stop so we got clear. Tim, you're more clearly heard from your micro from your computer. Well, we're going to keep, they want to see me here, Charlie. Can you hear me well now? All right. This debate about freedom of the press and the goodwill of the American people is nothing new. There used to be pamphleteering in what we call the revolution of the United States where you put pamphlets out and you then try to, uh, and they were largely partisan. Most of your newspapers up until maybe the 1890s were very partisan newspapers. You had two, three in each town. And you were able to read the Democratic perspective, the Whig perspective, perhaps even the Republican perspective. And then, of course, you know, that your ir irresistible nobility of press freedom, who said, if it bleeds, it leads, has been very forthcoming. Anytime you have any scandal, or even today, if you sneeze wrong in the media, it gets worldwide coverage. I think all we're seeing today is the same old, same old that we've seen for hundreds of years. It's just a lot more instantaneous. It's a lot more, uh, like, shall we say, in your face. But again, the internet is only 30 years old. Younger people today know how to use it a little better than we do. You know, we still trust our mainstream sources, but we also know now how to flip it over. I'll tell you something, you know, when I really want to get to a bottom of a news story, I'll go to some other sources you guys don't even know about. Press TV, which is the Iranian news source. You can go to Russian television. They still have it out there, but you have to- Yeah, I'm going to go to Russian TV. What's all the time, Charlie? Uh, but it does give you a different perspective on worldwide events. RT is what I used to always call the Charlie Cap, the Charlie Paydock channel, because it was always <laughs> blasting uh, the United States and the way it was uh, always uh, talking about how bad capitalism was. I still think that a free press is essential to American liberty. I think our country is doing a good job by allowing these news outlets to thrive. And it's up to us to really. Uh, find out what we like. If a mass media is not liked or doesn't get any clicks, it goes out of business. If they get clicks and they're watched, that's why they're successful. If you really want to get some good hardcore news, you can always go to the AP and Reuters and any place else. The BBC is another good one. And I still, like, like I said, I still like my national public radio in the morning. I've often said that that was the second most important decision I made in my life. First one being my commitment to Christ, of course. But the second one was when I was driving to work one day in 1987, and I was listening to Howard Stern in the morning, and I was only 28 years old, and I said, I'm sick of hearing about women's body parts in the morning. <laughs> so I flipped over uh, Bob Edwards in Morning Edition. And then because it was non commercial, maybe a little leftist, I was booked. A little. To this day, I like NPR, but I also know too that they do have some bias. So if I'm at home, I'll relax and flip on Fox and see what the other side has to say. But not everybody has that time. I'm a news hound. I like news, like people like uh, sports. <coughs> um, so, you know, I'm one of these guys who likes to look at this stuff. I like the political views. But if you really want to get you some good, 
hardcore news sources. Just go to the top of the hour, flip on something like National Public Radio, or go to the old CBS news archive you would get on WBB, and it'll give you plenty to have in less than 30 minutes. Thank you. Got a boy, Tim. Who's next? All right, we're going to get a. Uh, yeah. No, Joe's been up there. Yeah. Yeah. A little yeah. level. The only thing I like to do is thank you for coming in the real thing. Conservative yeah. being censored yeah. and things yeah. like that. It's Charlie Tree. Basically, hey, can't hear. A couple of times, please speak in the mic. The evidence that conservatives are being censored by Charlie Tree by saying, hey, they can't hear. Can't hear. Why don't you say something that's more legitimate? That's he's using the kind of lawyer talk about about it, about six inches from your face. Sure, that's better. So he's trying to condescend to people and potentially FBI co intelco type tactic to slow people down and silence them. And, uh, I think he's listening to the fact that I'm talking about in such a control freak way, not as English as college that we're trying to impress. Uh, I'm regretting the time we even have to talk about it. So. First, some background about me. I'm not a Trump supporter. I think Trump is equally bad. And, uh, I was part of the protest in Chicago in May 2020. So I agree with you on uh, others. I think the folks COVID. Um, I agree that the first and second. Please speak up. Important. Um, and we're going to have the federal government do some of the things that we need to do in the next process. That's what I agree with conservatives on. I just don't agree with you on everything. I think you. I agree with conservatives are being silenced. I think Bill Nolan is being silenced. And I want to tell you, uh, think about this. CNN, MSNBC, all of these universities are not as far left as you think about it. CNN would show. I can't hear you, Joe. We got Here, use this microphone. CNN and MSNBC and universities are not as far left as you think they are. Yes, sir. So, CNN showed Trump at an empty podium um, and they diverted a lot of attention to him. Even some people who think, even some people who think that Hillary Clinton put Trump up and running with the foil. Um, so MSNBC had Nicole Wallace, who worked for the Bush administration, and they have Joe Scarborough, so they have some conservatives on there. Tucker Carlson will have Jimmy Dora on, both of you and have more things. So Fox News is actually, I think, less willing than CNN to put real progressives and real left on. And that speaks to something that Helen was saying that, uh, you know, the so called liberal viewers, which I think too many conservatives call leftists, are not as far left as you think because they're captured by corporations, you know, Pfizer, for example. Um, Neoliberals like support uh, the neocon because they support the board for the government. And, uh, oh, wait, yeah, you gotta put both of them there. <laughs> so I just I just hope a conservative will make a distinction between the neo neoliberal Democrats who run the media on CNN and the real leftists like communists. <laughs> uh, you know, we all need to figure out, you know, whether it's police being black blocks to look like anti bots. Now I'm not saying yeah, you know, obviously we're not gonna solve this tonight with what happened January 6th, but helping the protesters in the worst part, but Obviously, only a parliamentary coalition style government can allow us to have these discussions without being able to be black and white. You know, what we have to do before. What's your? Uh... I support the open discussion, and I hope that people like Charlie won't spend five whole minutes saying, "What's the basis of you? You're not qualified to talk about this." Can you hear this? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Andy. First off, uh, the points of agreement I have with our speaker tonight. One, there is, we've been buried, we've been buried in a sea of propaganda from the media. The Fox News Network is known as dispensing the fire hose of lies every day. They're not, they're widely recognized now as not a news organization. It's a propaganda outlet. Journalism schools around the country, like the one out in Sonoma State that publishes book on the free press every year, they use Fox News as a teaching tool. 
This is how you do good propaganda to get the people to believe things that aren't real. The idea, hold on. The idea that 90% of journalists are left-leaning Democrats or left-leaning leftists, I think is about as far out of touch with observable reality as one can be. If I was not, you know, if I was going to be facetious, I would ask to see your ticket stubs to see if you just got here on the light speed space shuttle from Mars. Personal where, attack. Where, where have you been Personal living? Personal attack. Shut up. Shut up. We will be asked to leave. No, no, come on, come on. Let's let him okay. finish. No hacking. How is it possible to live in America and, believe, and, and ignore the fact that we have, Ralph Nader said we basically have one party. That's the corporate party dominated by billionaires. We have a billionaire problem, not a left or right problem. It's a billionaire problem. They own and control the media. And they want to give us the idea that, oh, well, as one person said, I think it was a comedian that said, if you tell the truth in America, you're, you're called a leftist or a communist. There are documented realities that the go fly in the face of the fantasy that's put out on Fox News and, and other media. The Federalist Society, if you didn't know that, has been selecting politicians and training them to masquerade as judges. We got the courts, Trump spent four years packing the court with right-wing politicians that were shoved through law schools. They have no business being on the bench anywhere. You know, a judge is hearing the case now. It's either, uh, I'm, I'm, it's hard to keep up with the 20 Republican states that are promoting laws. The latest idea is if any woman has a miscarriage, uh, you can investigate and see if she caused that miscarriage, then she can be tried for murder. That's a bill that's going through uh, Congress in one of the Republican controlled states right now. These things are documented reality. We're on 21st, man, yeah, we're on 22nd year of the media, all the media, promoting the myth that we were attacked by Al Qaeda on 9 11. That was a giant real estate fraud. Seven buildings were destroyed that day. That's documented. Thousands of sources. That's not an opinion. You have to sit and separate documented reality, what I call a database, from opinion. You know, there's no debate on it anymore. If you smoke four packs a day, it's not good for your health. That's a database. The idea that smoking four packs a day might add to your life, that's an undocumented opinion that has no basis in reality. Right now, this book, I, I got this yesterday at Barbara's bookstore. It's called The Climate Book. This book was edited by Greta Thunberg, but it's loaded with statements, investigative reporters uh, investigating the soil, the oceans, Arctic, North, South, the ice melting, everything you want to know documented about what's happening to our climate and how our planet is being changed is basically summarized in this book. If you don't have time to read 200 other books on what's happening around the world, I would suggest you buy this one. It's called The Climate Book by Greta Thunberg. And if you want to know how the media is used to shape and mold public opinion and bury us in a fire hose of lies 24 seven, get a copy of this book. It comes out every year. It's called State of the Free Press. It's Project Center out of Sonoma State. That's the project. It's been up and running for over 40 years. The State of the Free Press and what it says on the back, it says Project Centered is a voice of sanity in our upside down media landscape. State of the Free Press 2022 is a must read for all who value a free and open society. If you want a free and open society, I would start with this. Project Centered out of Sonoma State. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, one other thing, there's, there's websites, three websites that I get truthful information out of. I haven't been able to uh, debunk as being slanted one way or the other. One of them is called Common Dreams. That's commondreams.org. Another one's called The Smirking Chimp. And the third one is called Truth On. And those three are reader supported, no advertisements. So they're not owned and operated by billionaires. And they're not slamming and shaping and molding our public opinion. 
like uh, much of the rest of the internet, like our, our speaker said, you know, uh, the internet has become toxic. Uh, Facebook and the others with the algorithms and everything else. It's hard, very hard to discern what's real and what isn't. Thank you. Okay, our speaker gets the final word. Go ahead, get up there. One more. One more. Go ahead, John F. Then we're gonna get you're gonna get your final word in, but then make it quick because you're gonna have like about five more five minutes. Go ahead, Jonathan. Let's welcome Jonathan back, our resident resident poet laureate from the college. All right. All right, let's uh, go ahead there, Jonathan. Glad to see you're back. Use the mic, Jonathan, if you can. Jonathan, use the mic if you're going to talk. Use the mic. I can hear. Thank you, John. Wow, but John. Any all here tonight? I saw a movie. For once, Tom Chomsky, Requiem for the American Dream. Pass that around. Pass that around. It's good. Another one is Body of War. Pass that around. Another one is Tom Chomsky, Imperial Grand Strategy. Pass that around. Another one is uh, Nochowski, oh, another Nochowski, Manufacturing Consent. That's a good one. Pass that around. Another movie is uh, No End in Sight. Pass that around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Another one is uh, Taxi to the Dark Side. Pass that one around. Yeah. Another one is Where to Invade Next. Pass uh, that one around. Thank you. And the last one, affectionately titled Free the Army, FTA, but F could stand for even more fun things than the word free. You forgot Pass that one around. And you also forgot Pandora's Promise. I don't have uh, vice because I pawned it to get here today. No, no, it's called Pandora's Promise. It's a good movie. See, no, vice is a good one too. All right. Yeah. So just leave me your email. I don't know who you are. And you can borrow those movies and get a feeling of uh, what we're headed for. The trail, the train, and day, each a different trance. Don't fail to take all praise as well as flat. We say it's the same, it's not the same, it's at least not as. Feed ache, eyes strain, and the page and pens just clash. The wait, the wage, and way reach distant land. Don't wail, don't jail your grace, it helps you back. They claim it's a game, but pain's real as combat. Heartbreak, my saint's been taken. Farewell, pal. Yesterday's extinct, tomorrow's on the break, and now is the only drink we have a taste for. I don't eat. And we say once again, wage peace, not war. And so we say once again, wage freedom, not slam doors. We say wage equality, not enslavement to scoreboards. So we say all again, wage peace, not war. Uh, oh my goodness, look at this list I brought. There's some interesting characters here. Uh, does anybody recognize what they all have in common? George Bush. You can't see the names. Read the names. Read the names. Yeah, George W. Bush. Dick Cheney. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll yeah. start again. Yeah. George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Paul Wolfowitz, Alberto Gonzalez, David Addington, William Haynes, Jay Bybee, Colin Powell, John Bolton, Richard Pearl, John Yu, Al Paul Bremer, George Tennant, Illinois' own Dennis Hasper, Illinois' own Peter Fitzgerald, Illinois' own Ray LaHood, Illinois' own Brad Blagojevich, David Brooks, Jeffrey Goldberg, Judith Miller, Joe Biden, Mitch McConnell, John McCain, Chuck Schumer, Hillary Clinton, Jeff Sessions, Joseph Lieberman, John Kerry, and a long list of others. We don't have a time at five minutes. College of Cups rebuttal. What do they have in common? They're all war criminals. Yes. They betrayed your trust and my trust. They betrayed your time in my time. They betrayed your taxes and my taxes. 
can everybody in the room, we're all together as human beings, agree on that tonight? Yeah. Everybody, can we all in one big circle if we had to hold our hands and agree on that? Oh, okay. Okay. All right, all right, Jonathan, we gotta get The most get, transparently gotta... illegal war in history, the most media applauded war in history, the most profitable war in history, the most unpopular war with we the people of Earth in history. Okay. Uh, thank you to our speaker tonight. Don't don't provoke us with all right. Our speaker gets the last word. Thank you, Mark. Got about four minutes or so. Four minutes. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can. Okay. Free speech is under assault, and it is under assault by the left, and the mainstream media is complicit in that assault. One of the things, as I pointed out, that makes America the greatest country to ever have existed on the face of the earth in the entirety of the human race is the right to free speech. All 10 of the amendments of the Bill of Rights, which basically tells the government, thou shalt not do this, that these rights are reserved for us, the people. And free speech, I believe, was put in number one for a reason. Because with that, you can speak to the other nine amendments in the Bill of Rights. They're necessary for their defense. They're necessary, free speech is necessary to preserve all your other rights and to live as a human being. It's necessary to be able to express what you really believe without fear of prosecution, without fear of discrimination, and that is what is under assault right now. I presented numerous examples, and I'm just going to address something that Charlie said that you can't rule by example. Well, I have yet to see examples in the reverse, but that's for another speaker another day. Well, let me know. I'll give you, I'll give you a shot. Charlie, it's my turn. I didn't interrupt you, don't interrupt me. Okay, so we, there was a lot more that I had wanted to get to tonight. I wanted to get to the Twitter files. They are a treasure trove of information that proves, without a doubt, what I've been talking about tonight. Elon Musk did a huge favor for America when he bought Twitter, but more needs to be done. Yes, in the title, I talked about the billionaires that need to step up, and somebody said it's a billionaire problem. Well, I, Agree and I disagree. It depends on which billionaire you're talking about because all billionaires are not equal. Just because you have a billion dollars doesn't make you a bad, evil person. <laughs> you have money, it matters. And there are some good billionaires out there and Elon Musk, as quirky as he might be with some of the things he's done before, he is, <laughs> oh, okay. it, it, it is a prime example. The other thing I wanted to get to is, in addition to doing the deep dive is how buying media companies is possible, or at least changing control, is some more things that you can do. The last speaker talked about uh, alter, or I think the last couple of speakers, I, I know uh, Kim did about other alternate media sources. I have a whole section that if I do do a part two, I'm going to present that are a huge list of places you can go to find alternate information. I, I mentioned too, DuckDuckGo and Free Spoke is alternate websites. When you type in media bias against conservatives with Google and those other two search engines, different results come up, and that's on purpose. It, it, the algorithm that Google has created is, is part of the complicity in this oppression of free speech. We have a great country. It's ours to keep or it's ours to lose. We must preserve free speech. We must be able to obviously hear what we want to hear or what we believe, but we really do need to be able to sit in a room and listen to people we don't agree with and be able to give them the respect that they deserve to say what they want to say. At the end, we're still going to have elections. We're still going to elect uh, politicians, presidents, Congress, all of that, governors, and, and policy will be decided. But free speech must prevail. Thank you. Okay. David, adjourn us. David, go ahead and turn us out. Okay. Thanks, all of you, for coming tonight. Hopefully, I believe we're going to have an open microphone on the subject of the last minute. And we stand adjourned.